morning. As chair of the commission, excuse me, as vice chair of the commission, I call this meeting of the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission to order at nine o'clock. Is the microphone on? Can you hear me? Should I just keep going? This Zoom webinar is being live streamed on YouTube on the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission YouTube channel. For anyone in the public watching who would prefer to watch via a different platform than they are currently using, please visit our social media at Redistricting MI. Our live stream today includes closed captioning. Closed captioning, ASL interpretation, and Spanish, Arabic, and Bengali translation services will be provided for effective participation in this meeting. Email us at redistricting at michigan.gov for additional viewing options or details on accessing language translation services for this meeting. People with disabilities needing other specific accommodations should also contact redistricting at michigan.gov. This meeting is being recorded and will be available at www.michigan.gov micrc forward slash micrc for viewing at a later date. This meeting is also being transcribed and those closed caption transcripts will be made available and posted on the michigan.gov forward slash micrc website along with written public comment submissions. There is also a public comment portal that may be accessed by visiting michigan.gov forward slash MICRC. This portal can be utilized to post maps and comments, which can be viewed by both the commission and the public. Members of the media who may have questions before, during, or after the meeting should direct those questions to Edward Woods III, Communications and Outreach Director for the commission at woodse3 at michigan.gov or 517-331-6309. For the purposes of the public watching and the public record, I will turn to Department of State staff to take note of the commissioners present. Good morning, commissioners. Please stay present when I call your name. If you're attending today's meeting remotely, please disclose during roll call that you are attending remotely as well as your physical location. I'll call on commissioners in alphabetical order, starting with Doug Clark. I'm present and I'm attending the meeting remotely today from Rochester Hills. Juanita Curry. Anthony Ede, Brittany Kellum, Rhonda Lang. Present, attending remotely from Reed City, Michigan. Steve Lett. Present. Cynthia Orton. Present. MC Rothhorn. Present. Rebecca Satella. Janice Follett. Present. Aaron Wagner. Present, attending remotely from Charlotte, Michigan. Richard Weiss. Present. Dustin Witches. Present. 10 commissioners are present and there is a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. As a reminder to the public watching, you can view the agenda at michigan.gov forward slash MICRC. I would now entertain a motion to approve the meeting agenda. So moved. Commissioner Witches, the first, and Commissioner Lett, the second. Is there any discussion or debate on the motion? Hearing none, it is moved and seconded. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. All opposed, raise your hand and say nay. The ayes prevail, the motion is adopted. Without objection, we will now begin the public comment pertaining to agenda topics portion of our meeting. Hearing no objection, we will now proceed with public comment pertaining to agenda topics. Individuals, forgive me for just a minute. Individuals who have signed up and indicated they would like to provide in-person public commentary to the commission will now be allowed to do so. Please step to the nearest microphone when I call your, uh, your number. You will have one minute to address the commission. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the timer. First in line to provide public comment is Sarah Howard. Uh, good morning and thank you. We appreciate the progress toward partisan fairness. Keep it up and do the same for the state Senate map. I saw a portal submission this morning with a map very similar to yours, but much better on partisan fairness under uh, Nathan, small changes equals fair Senate map. In your House and Senate maps, you will have to unpack heavily Democratic areas like Lansing. Don't be afraid of that. Cities and counties are not communities of interest. And as Dr. Adelson said yesterday, it's impossible to accommodate all communities of interest. Remember, you can and are required to choose the communities of interest that help you draw a map that get to partisan fairness. 
You don't have to sacrifice either one or for the other. You can and are constitutionally required to do both. Please look at the Fair Maps Project for ideas and keep trying until you hit zero. Finally, while we respect Dr. Adelson's expertise, we are very concerned about such low BVAP in Detroit. Many of your districts are majority suburbs and are overwhelmingly white when you factor in voter turnout. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. We will now move on to number two. Good morning, I'm Crystal Boyd and I'm Sarah Howard's legal assistant. Um, we support using a composite of election results to check partisan fairness, but we are concerned your composite will miss some major trends. Political coalitions have changed dramatically since 2012. Your math could mislead you. A 50-50 district may be highly competitive over time, or it could have been very safe for one party early in the decade and is very safe for the other party now. Monroe County is a great example of this. We recommend weighing your composite score so that 2020 is worth the most and 2012 is worth the least. That would account for trends over time. We also have concerns about including US Senate elections in the calculation. As studies show, US Senate results are very poorly correlated with state legislative results. Thank you for your efforts. You are on the right track. Thank you for addressing the commission. Now, uh, number three. Hello, good morning. I'm Kate Rogers. I'm an MSU student, and I can testify that Lansing and East Lansing are communities of interest, and I encourage you not to split them up. I, it's unprecedented in all of Michigan's history. It's never been done before, and that's for a good reason, which is because Lansing and East Lansing share lots of commonalities, such as the transit system, library system, hospital care networks, fire chief, and many other things. So splitting up these districts would not be a good idea. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Number four. Good morning, my name is Ryland. I'm a student at Michigan State University. Again, I'm here to testify on keeping East Lansing and Lansing unified. Uh, try, those are a very obvious cities of interest and commonalities. Uh, as a student, I can testify that um, you know, our transit system, our fire chief, they're shared between the two cities right now and separating those two would just further complicate things. As a student, I can get on a bus, I can get to East Lansing, I can get to Lansing very effectively you know, nightly, there's fire trucks running left and right. And that would just further uh, complicate things throughout the area. And uh, making sure that these areas are, uh, are commonalities and, and stay together is very important. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Number five. Hi, my name is Colin. I'm an MSU student. Um, just like my uh, other uh, fellow MSU students said, um, it's unprecedented um, for the Michigan, uh, for the East Lansing and Lansing communities to be split up um, in redistricting. Um, in 2018, voters, not politicians, uh, decided that the Independent Redistricting Committee Commission would focus on keeping our communities together and would not split up portions of our state for political pur purposes. They promised that voters would pick politicians that represent the communities. But what you've done over the past two days is pick apart certain communities solely to pack voters of one party in with a community they clearly don't belong with. You are doing a major disservice to voters of both parties and completely abandoning the sole reason that this commission was created. Thank you. Thank you for your input. I believe we have concluded with live in-person public comment. So we will now move on to live remote. Individuals who have signed up and indicated they would like to provide live remote public commentary to the commission will now be allowed to do so. I will call your name and our staff will unmute you. If you're on a computer, you will be prompted by the Zoom app to unmute your microphone and speak. If you're on the phone, a voice will say that the host would like you to speak and prompt you to press star six to unmute. I will call on you by your name or number. Please also please note that if you experience technical or audio issues or we do not hear from you for three to five seconds, we will move on to the next person in line and then return to you after they are done speaking. If your audio still does not work, you can email redistricting at michigan.gov and we will help you troubleshoot so you can participate during the next public comment period or at a later hearing or meeting. You will have one minute to address the commission. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the timer. First in line to provide public comment is Melanie Mack. Good morning. I'm Melanie Mack and I live in DeWitt, Michigan, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you this morning. 
first thing I'd like to do is thank you, thank you, thank you for your work. I think it's an incredibly complex and difficult, and I know that you are trying your best. I hope that you will continue to try just a little harder because fairness is the utmost thing that we need, and we're not quite there yet. My husband and I both uh, canvassed both to get signatures, and then we went out to do voter education during the um, effort to pass Prop 2 back in 2018. And what I heard from people all over, everywhere I went, is they've sort of lost faith in the system because they perceive it as being really unfair. And while I really appreciate that you're keeping the Lansing area together, please work just a bit harder to make the whole process more fair for both parties. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. Uh, number two, Tom Tenbrink. My name is Tom Tenbrink. I am the recently retired superintendent of Jenison Public Schools located in Georgetown Township. Our nationally recognized school district of 5,600 students is only 16 square miles. We have invested years in building our community to a strongly bonded family that serves one another. This was never more evident than in how our community responded in their support of each other through the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm dismayed to learn that there are districting proposals, especially in map 203, districts three and six, that will divide our small community in half. Neighbors who share a bus stop, a classroom, and a street would have different federal representation. Furthermore, I've spent decades working hand in hand with my colleagues across Ottawa County to collaborate and improve the educational experience for all of our county children. From Jenison to the Lakeshore, administrators, teachers, and students have worked together to achieve academic excellence for all students throughout Ottawa County. In Jenison, we have repeatedly come together as a family to overcome, to celebrate, and to move forward. I urge you to avoid dividing our tight-knit community by keeping Jenison and Georgetown Township together. Thank you for addressing the commission. Next in line is number three, Denzel McCampbell. That participant is not currently present. Thank you. Um, next in line is number four, Judy Mega. Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, I, I applaud your efforts yesterday. I, I was able to listen to most of the meeting. It was, it, you know, I don't need to tell you how tedious and hard it was. It was also extremely appreciated by everyone who has worked so hard on this project. I ask that you continue on that path. There were districts that you still needed to analyze yesterday. And I, and I beg you to please go back and continue on that path. 5555 on the house is a good start, but it's not enough at this point. The, um, the, I know that it's tedious to combine all the necessary metrics, but the trust and confidence in a fair and democratic process is literally depending on all of you. So I thank you. I want to know how, to let you know how much you're appreciated. And I, and I ask you to continue. I also urge you to, um, I echo the comments of the previous uh, suggestion to use a compilation of election results when you compare the efficiency gap, which should be zero. Thank you. Thank you. Next in line is number five, Jordan Scrimger. Hi again, commissioners. It's Jordan. I work in Lansing and I'm from Metro Detroit. So I have just a few observations. Thanks as always for your meticulous work taking into account all this feedback. I know it can't be easy. But that being said, I appreciate what you've come up with as far as the congressional and state Senate maps. So I wanna focus on the house maps. Currently in Metro Lansing, the districts look belted in to keep the urban and suburban areas separate from rural ones. 
I actually think this is an area you might revisit to examine how you might increase fairness and steward the diverse communities of interest. Also in the house map, I think you may wanna revisit some of the vertical north, south, southeastern Oakland County districts like Farmington and Farmington Hills to better take into account COIs. Finally, if it is at all possible, given the multitude of districts evidencing the number of people in the area, I would really recommend adding another public hearing in Metro Detroit. So we ensure equity during these final opportunities to weigh in. Thank you so much for all of your hard work. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, next in line is number six, Aileen Langley. Good morning to the PIC Commission and those gathered. My name is Aislinn Langley. I live in Okemos. I'm a grad student at MSU. I work in Lansing and I've been in the living in the greater Lansing area for five or so years now. Oh, sorry, I can also start the video. Um, for so I'm I would like to start by thanking the commission for all their hard work. I'm originally from Kentucky, which doesn't have independent redistricting. So Michigan is really lucky to have this opportunity. Um, so for the state house maps, voters across Metro Lansing are currently packed into just a few districts. I'm concerned that this could result in urban, suburban, and more rural parts of the metro area having unequal representation as more diverse areas of Lansing are crammed together and surrounding more hom homogenous communities are able to remain apart. Uh, in regards to the other maps, I would like to voice my support for the way you have mapped the congressional and state senate districts. Those are currently looking good and representative of the area. And so I would just like to thank you again for your work on the commission. I look forward to seeing the official proposed maps. Thank you, Aislinn. Uh, next in line is number seven. Oh, and, and I'd like to welcome Commissioner Curry. Do you wanna um, tell us where you're um, re attending remotely from? Good morning, yes. Uh, Juanita Curry attending remotely from Detroit, Michigan. Thank you, Commissioner Curry. Okay. Next in line is number seven, Ratna Rao. Hi, good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, thank you so much for all this great work you're doing. I have joined the meeting a couple of times and I really appreciate your work. Uh, I'm here to represent the Indian American community and requesting you on the congressional district maps to please keep Troy and Novi together. We are communities of interest, lots of shared uh, activities, cultural and otherwise language services. So I really please want you to look at keeping Troy and Novi together in the congressional map. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ratna. Next in line is number eight, Nicholas Carlson. Good morning, my name is Nicholas Carlson and I'm a student living in East Grand Rapids. First, I'd like to thank the commission for their hard work in creating these fair districts for Michigan. I want to say that I'm very supportive of the congressional maps numbers 187 and 201 with Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo together. As two urban centers in Michigan, it seems like the obvious choice is to allow for representation that it can, can account for the urban areas on the west side, rather than trying to group in rural and urban interest groups together. Our towns have a lot in common in terms of entertainment options, general culture, transportation needs, and education. So keeping these metro areas whole is going to allow for representation in government that's going to be more true to constituents' desires as it pertains to each group's interests. As a student, I can personally testify that the interests of both the student and urban populations in Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids are much more similar than that of the geographic similarities between Grand Rapids and surrounding rural areas. Thank you again for your help with these maps. Thank you for that feedback. Uh, next in line is number nine, Dominique Stepp. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dominique Stepp. And I am a resident in Lansing. I have been here my entire life and have started a family here. I want to first start off by saying that I appreciate the state Senate and congressional maps for trying to create fairness in the Lansing area. However, right now, it does seem like the Metro Lansing voters seemed a little packed and condensed, grouped into a few house districts. And this won't give our region 
equal representation, which is something that I would like for my children to have um, as they do get older. Um, I have also heard that rural communities want to be kept separate, but we are a metro region and they do still seek services, businesses, um, et cetera, in the urban suburban area. So I do think that is something that does need to be looked over. Um, again, I do look forward to seeing the final maps. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, next in line is number 10, Asha Vinod. That participant is not present. Thank you, Secretary of State. Uh, next in line then is number 11, Eric Hartman. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to join you today. Uh, my name is Dr. Eric Hartman. I am a local chiropractor, business owner, and also serve as the vice president of the Jenison uh, Board of Education. Uh, I chose to raise my family in Ottawa County because of the values, work ethic, and culture that are present here. I believe it's important to have voices for my community to speak up because this commission seems to be familiar with it, despite a few people up to before me uh, voicing this. I sympathize with your task as a difficult one. Well, I want to, be, want it to be clear, Georgetown Township shares cultural, economic, and historical ties with Ottawa County. Map 187 keeps Ottawa County as a community of interest. Breaking communities of interest does not align with your constitutional requirements. Some of the commission has offered maps that split Georgetown, which is unacceptable with others that have attempted to place my home with Kent County. If I wanted to live in Kent County, I would do so. I chose to establish my business, my family, and my life here in Ottawa County uh, for a particular reason. Please keep Ottawa County, our community's interest whole. There is a reason community's interests are ranked higher than partisan fairness. I ask the commission to respect and abide by how voters, not politicians, prioritize communities of interest. Thank you. Thank you for addressing the commission. Um, next in line is number 12, Evan Odekirk. That participant is not present. Thank you. Next in line is number 13, Anthony Scannell. Okay, good morning, Commission. Uh, Anthony Scannell, lifelong Wayne County resident. I just want to touch on some troubling things I've heard in the past two days from commissioners. Uh, namely, uh, two days ago, Commissioner Clark, you know, you guys were working on the congressional map and you made the suggestion, Commissioner Clark, that it was too complex to even adjust the congressional map in Detroit for, I presume, VRA implications, but that's just not a good look too complex to do what your job literally is, which is to draw lines on the map and commissioners, which is and Zatella agreed with that. I just thought it was a little ridiculous. Uh, yesterday, Mr. Clark, you also said communities of interest don't matter in the congressional map. And that is clearly apparent from the product you've produced. Mr. Witches, you said the size of the maps printed out on the wall might limit what you bring. S how, how many maps you propose? I mean, are you serious? So you slaughtered my community of interest in Downriver and you, there's only one draft as far as Congress is concerned. Thank you, Anthony, for that remark, those remarks. Um, number 14, Mark Lemoyne. We can't hear you, Mr. Lemoyne. Mr. Lemoyne, we cannot hear you. We see your lips moving, but we can't hear you. Mark, if you can hear us, we cannot hear you. Mr. Chair, I recommend we move on to the next participant okay. and we can work to resolve this issue with him. Thank you, Secretary of State Staff. Um, number 15, Kathy Lakem. That participant is not currently present. Very good, thank you. Um, number 16, Eileen McNeil. Hello. Hello. Uh, okay, I'm starting my video. Go ahead, we're ready. 
Thank you for your time and efforts. I've lived many years in both Lansing and Grand Rapids. And based on your commitment to create non-gerrymandered districts by the people and not politicians, I really urge you to reject the proposed state Senate district that would carve up the city of Lansing, putting it with rural suburbs with whom it has no communities of interest. It just makes common sense to keep Lansing and East Lansing together. They share multiple services and interests and they should be in the same legislative districts. The same for the city of Grand Rapids. You've carved it up in two separate Senate seats with far flung communities. They have nothing in common when they could be compact and contiguous with Lans East Lansing, with East Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids and Kentwood. This just makes sense. There are two maps also congressionally, you know, Kalamazoo does not belong with Grand Rapids. They, they are two separate, totally separate communities. So I urge you to rethink that after talking to many, many people in these two communities. And also Thank putting you for your the comments. notion of putting- um, Number 17, James Gallant. Hello, James Gallant, Marquette, these are my opinions. And uh, please formally look into that voters, not politicians promises to kind of clear up some of these mis, uh, misinformation in the community. And there's been several comments about that, what people expected and do your due diligence and please hire a registered parliamentarian to look into your rules of procedure here. And now that they're in motion that you approved that last week, now you have this motion to discuss yet. You said, oh, just moving on to discussion now. Well, where's the motion to discuss? And it seems like every time that somebody's going to change the subject, which is common, that they would have to then do another motion to discuss to change the, the, what they're discussing, you know, as you go so you can figure it out. And the motion to, close, to clear the floor. That's like actually to sweep under the rug. Is that what you want to do? Just, just stop everything and don't even include that in minutes. But it's clearly there's four or five members are clearly dominating these proceedings. And I believe that any meetings outside of these meetings by Zatella, Roth, Witches, Eid, and Clark should be considered an ad hoc subcommittee because everybody's just, uh, you know, deferring to them and just passing the ball to them. They're in the driver's seat. And then now they. Thank you for addressing the commission. Um, it looks like we can return to number 14. Mark Lemoyne, please proceed. Thank you, Commissioner. Sorry about that. Um, I just uh, wanted to thank you again for the opportunity to speak as well as the dedication of time and effort you're putting into this process. My wife and I are seasonal business owners uh, here in Hager Township down in uh, Berrien County in Southwest Michigan. And we directly understand uh, the importance that tourism uh, has on the local economy, as well as understanding the significant role that Lake Michigan plays in driving tourism and the opportunity for our community. In order for our community to thrive, we need a healthy Lake Michigan and the health of the Great Lakes is directly tied to the economy up and down uh, the lake shore. Um, specifically, I want to uh, offer support for Congressional Map uh, 187, which draws an important community of interest up and down the coastline of Lake Michigan. As drawn, District 9 would include Muskegon, Grand Haven, Holland, Saugatuck, South Haven, uh, Benton Harbor, and St. Joe, which is closest to us, all of which uh, are communities uh, that depend on the lake, not to mention the manufacturing and ag agribusinesses that are there. This congressional district would also encompass critical watersheds. Uh, and I just, again, appreciate your time uh, and support for MAP 187. Thank you for your comments. Um, our final participant today is number 18, Robert Dindoffer. Mr. Chair, number 12 has now joined the meeting. Excellent. Uh, so before we go to Robert Dindoffer, let's go to number 12, Evan Odekirk. Uh, hello, I'd just like to uh, repeat some comments that I've heard earlier, um, which is primarily that um, any uh, commission with the goals that I think this one does should not split um, the Lansing community into three different districts. Um, I think it is um, a very blatant partisan um, gerrymander to split the communities that are so pretty evidently um, together, um, East Lansing, Lansing, Okemos and dilute them into rural communities that surround it. And uh, I also believe that as a resident of Kalamazoo, that Kalamazoo does not belong in a district with Grand Rapids. They are two significant cities with significant histories and communities and populations around them. And they uh, <clears throat> do not belong in the same district. I think the current, you know, West Michigan, third district style, and then the Southwest Michigan, which is already 
very compact, very contiguous um, as a Southwest Michigan region, does not need to be split up with splitting counties in the way that the draft proposal does. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're moving to number 18. Uh, our final public comment participant, uh, remote public comment, I should say, Robert Dindoffer. Can you hear me? We can. It's a little choppy. Oh. Wait. How about now? We can hear you. It just the uh, yeah. You may want to turn right. off your video so we get better audio. Um is, uh, can you hear me now better? Yes. Right. Okay. Sorry. I'll start. So I live in a community that's currently broken up and misaligned in the 2011 maps. Our local state rep won't even answer our calls unless you're a big money donor. Uh, but they don't care about our local issues because we've been split up uh, in our local community and misaligned. Um, and that's what it's like to live in a community that's cracked and misaligned. Uh, your local rep won't even, doesn't care about your issues. And that's what you all are, are doing right now to some communities. Uh, some of the districts you drew for partisan reasons actually make sense from a COI standpoint. Some of them just break up local cities, and I'm really concerned about that. Um, legally, you're not allowed to do it. Communities of interest are ranked higher than, than partisan concerns. Uh, and morally, it's just wrong. You're disenfranchising people and giving more power to party bosses because party is going to matter more than, than localities. You know, I'm a split ticket voter. I don't care about the party. I care about having local representation. And if there's something tugging at your heartstrings right now, uh, commissioners, that's called your conscience. I, I really hope you'll, you'll follow. Thank you for addressing the commission. That concludes our public comment. However, I would like to mention that all emailed and mailed public comment is provided to the commission before each meeting. And commissioners also review the public comment portal at www.michigan.gov forward slash MICRC website on a regular basis. We appreciate everyone who provides public comment in whatever way you choose and invite you to keep sharing your thoughts, communities of interest, and maps. Before we get too deeply into the meeting, I would like to appoint Commissioner Orton as acting chair in case I have to step away. Next, I'd like to move to unfinished business, agenda item 5A, and without objection, we will return to continuing assessment of draft maps for compliance and adjustments. Yesterday, we were working on the state house districts and we were adjusting to lower the population deviations. I believe it was Commissioner Vallette's turn to instruct the line drawer. Commissioner Vallette. Um, Commissioner Clark has his hand raised. Let's hear from him first. Very good. Commissioner Clark. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, MC. Um, I, I've got a subject that I wanted to bring up before we started mapping and I wanna thank James Gallant. Uh, he, he brought it up uh, in, uh, his comment this morning. Um, I feel we're not getting enough diversity in having uh, the entire commission uh, participate significantly in the mapping process. What I feel is that we're passing too often and it's all focused toward a collective few people. And the maps really deserve to be done from a diversity standpoint and all 13 people um, participate um, uh, as we go forward and, and we get their opinions and uh, um, their input as well. Um, not only input, but moving, you know, moving just our townships and precincts and whatever to meet the goals that we're doing. So I would encourage everyone on the commission to um, not pass, and uh, put the effort uh, into uh, your ideas on, on how the map should be reflected. So uh, 
I did. I wanted to make that point and again, thank uh, James Collapse for also bringing it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder, Commissioner Clark. Commissioner uh, Curry, you have your hand. Yes, I want to comment <laughs> from what Doug said. Excuse me, my voice is very uh, raspy this morning. Um, I understand what he's saying and I kind of agree, but if you, if you, when you get ready to draw your maps and people uh, uh, criticize you so bad, it makes you not want to uh, kind of continue drawing them and you try to give the respect of the maps to the ones that seemingly know exactly what you guys are doing and I think you're doing a fine job. I'll try to put my two cents in as it come, uh, but um, some of us are a little bit more educated when it comes to drawing maps than the others, but I respect everybody and I'll try to put as much in as I can. That's my comment. Thank you, Commissioner Curry. If there are hands on online that I don't see, please give me your voice at the, at the moment. Otherwise, I'm gonna to try to turn it back to Commissioner Vallette. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. Commissioner Vallette, the floor is yours. So are we going to do the pop finish with the population? That is where we were yesterday and that is what um, sort of I suggested and I believe it is your turn. So we, we also have to finish the, um, the uh, partisan fairness. We have a couple of measures there. Where would you like to go? Um, I'd like to see District 60. Oh, oh um, Mr. Stigall. Before we get started, I made a copy of the last plan we worked on yesterday, gave it today's date. Is that where we're going to start a new plan? I mean, it's a copy of yesterday's. Yes, that, yes. Okay. that is accurate. Then I'll get started with open that up the house. Yes. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Stigall. Again, um, Commissioner Vallette, the floor is yours. Commissioner Vallette? I, I think um, District 60 was one of the districts on our list yesterday. So can I see that? Yes, ma'am, we'll go straight to 60. I believe that was the, was that the last one that was worked on significantly? I'm not, or no, it was. No, I believe it was 57 was the, the, the last one that I have. That's my, those are my notes. Do other commissioners have anything different? Okay, yeah, so I believe it was 57, but I think, oh, 60 is down in the Monroe area. Well, it still is over 3,000 short. Yep. So unfortunately yeah. that 61 isn't next to it. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is down there, thank you. How do you know? If you can turn on your, your mics, that's a help. My mic, oh, him? You're, yeah. Because he also said, oh, 22 was short. And right, I that was Commissioner E. Go ahead, Commissioner E. So. What, what might help, Kent, can you change the, the spreadsheet to show the districts uh, in view? Oh, wait, it is. So why isn't 22 being shown? A cut, probably because it just, it's too many districts at one time. Uh, um, let me zoom in a little bit and narrow them right down. There, 22 minus. Okay, I think we have them on the screen now. Almost. Okay, but 61, they're almost a swap. Okay. So um, can you move south just a little bit? I'm going to see if I can take it from 61. If we can. <clears throat> no, that's not going to work because they're both short. No. May I, may, I, uh, sharp, may I make a general suggestion? Sure. When you have this situation, you can look at the surrounding districts, you know, a little bit out. Um, for example, 62 is 481. So if you move population into 65 or 61, 60, then you could move some into 62. Does that make sense? If you yes. move population around here anywhere, then you can move some to 62. 
<clears throat> this is Commissioner Orton. Can you make this the active matrix bigger? I can't tell if things are positive or negative because I can't see it well enough. Can can you see that now? Or? Yeah. So okay. 60, 61 and and 40 are all over, right? Can you turn on your microphone? It's just a oh, call. I'm sorry. Yeah. And 62 is a little light. This one here. And what do we have on 66? 65 is even. So, I mean, it could take some. 66 is kind of even. So it could even take a little bit. So, you know, however you want to do it, these guys over here could absorb some population. 67 could even absorb some population. I don't know if it messes with the other dynamics or not. 68 could take a little population. So all these around here could absorb some. Commissioner Weiss. Janice, it looks like District 22 is a little bit on the low side also. Maybe there's a swap there in from 60 into 22. Okay, so can I see the populations of those two areas? And, and maybe I'll offer too, like, I think this is the district that we adjusted because of partisan fairness measures. So what you may want to do before you start adjusting, all right, we can record the populations, but we may want to also record the partisan fairness measures because this is where it gets tricky, right? Yeah. So um, maybe want I want to do another district. <laughs> <laughs> for, ex for example, 22 is you know 50.5 to 49.5 can, uh, can can you increase the font yeah, again I, a little bit please thank so, you that's helpful so district 22 is a uh, very tight district to mess with 60 okay. 62 has a little wiggle room 40 is another very tight one so you would have to be very careful and diligent in moving population. You could try a different district if you are more comfortable. Do you have a suggestion? Now, there again, you, can, you might move a precinct that, imp I don't wanna say improves, but enhances the direction you had been going previously. Where is District 35? Commissioner Adelson, uh, excuse me, Mr. Adelson, did you have a comment? Yes, with the, uh, I want to pick up on, on something that, that Ken said about from a fairness standpoint and moving, continuing to keep the districts in the direction that we talked about yesterday that I believe there are some new thematic maps that have a, a precinct level mm. um, uh, partisan choices. Yep. I that may be a way to narrow down which districts shift from a oh, precinct shift from a part of the population deviation perspective. That I, I would suggest that that could be something that might be useful so the the margins and i recognize and agree with kent that some of these districts are pretty close from a the partisan standpoint so rather than even experimenting just target some of these precincts that don't affect the uh, partisanship commissioner witches i was uh had deep looking into the map i'm not sure if this one was mentioned or not but 79 needs some work in regards to population for sure. Excellent. So I just want to, what I want to do, because I think I see some numbers and I think Mr. Adelson was trying to help us recognize that we may have a new tool this morning that Mr. Stigall wants to sort of orient us to. Is that true? Yes. Uh, referring to what uh, Mr. Adelson said, we have two numbers here and I just picked the 2016 presidential election because we can only do one. So what it does is the number on top will be the greater number Red will be the Republican number. Blue will be the Democrat number. For example, in this precinct I have highlighted here, there was 1,114 votes for Republican, 500 for Democrat. Con uh, the polar opposite of that or 
opposite. It was over here where we had 462 votes for Democrat, 397 for Republican. So when you look at those numbers, this is just an example to use wherever you want to use it. If you move this precinct into 40, you would be increasing the Republican margin. If you move this precinct into 65, you would be moving out more Republican votes than Democrat votes. So this would be increasing, increasing the percentage at which the Democrats won 40. So if we go back to 40, this just, you know, pick in one spot. So that number, if we move that precinct over to here, this number would go up, not down, I believe, if that's correct, because there's twice as many. You're moving, you'd be moving whatever population out, but you're moving more red votes than blue votes. That's helpful, uh, Mr. Stigall. And this would be this would be the opposite. If you move this precinct over here, you'd be moving in more blue votes than red votes. Either one achieves the same goal. But if you're having to lower the population in 40 and you want to keep it over 50% Democrat, you would move out. Uh, the higher red number. Thanks for that orientation, Mr. Stigall. Commissioner Witches, and then I want to get it back to Commissioner Vallette. Um, what are the the, um, the titles of the labels to get those numbers on the screen? Okay, what we did is th there's a methodology for this. You would pick, can you see the screen? Yes. So President R16, uh, President D16, I selected that and I hit add dim and they put it right here. Then I selected this one and said add Republican. So it's called, um, and then I saved it so that I can pop right into it. And I called it press 16. And you can do that with any one of the elections at a time. So if I come up here, it's easier to flip between them. I thought that I could go up here and flip between them fairly quickly, okay? So there was another one. Can you bring it back up? Because there was another one, Pres, Pres 16, and it looked like there was an O. Pres 16 D. Yep, there, there's D, R. Yep, and so if you continue in the list, there was another one. That would be um, other, probably. Um, right. It's my guess where they combine whatever. The Green Party, right? Yeah, the others. Libertarian, okay. Green. Okay, all of them that are not. So it's the balance of the district. Uh, the votes in the district, so to speak. Okay. That's done fairly frequently. Okay. And it's not going to help us necessarily with um, um, sort of balancing our partisan fairness at this point, because we are- Mr. Adelson, oh, Mr. Adelson answers that question. I, I just, uh, just as a point, it, it, the, the, the tool that uh, Kent is showing these, uh, and as he indicated, they're one election and it shows what the partisan balance is. And I think that by checking the composite index, which as you, as you know, has many elections, we can make sure that we're not over adjusting, that we're adjusting with a, um, to use a metaphor with a meat cleaver instead of a scalpel. Okay. So I think that that's a good, safety check to make sure that the adjustments are not um, unsupportable. Great. I see your hand, Mr. Brace, but I want to uh, just ask a question to Mr. Adelson. So will you help? So I think we've got a great um, suggestion from Mr. Stigall to use the presidential 16, right? Yeah, exactly. And what I'm hearing you say, Mr. Adelson, is that you also want us to use the composite. Is the one-time vote, should we, would you recommend that we use the 16 presidential or would you say no in order to balance or get a more complete picture. And as we're doing this, right, because Commissioner Vellet's going to try to not guess this time, but actually, right, make some more informed choices. Should we use presidential 16 or would you suggest something different? Well, I think with with the tool as it's structured, rather than when yesterday we were, we didn't have that information. So it was much more difficult and trial and error to figure out how to make these adjustments. So this has the potential for eliminating that and showing us particular areas to look at without changing the balance, without um, weighting things unnecessarily, then the composite index is a good, it's a good check that we look at that with all the elections that are included in Dr. Handley's index to make sure that 
nothing has gone astray. Very good. So what I'm hearing is presidential 16 is just as good as any other one. So we're going to just go with it. Thank you, Mr. Adelson. Uh, yes. Mr. Stigall and then Mr. Brace. It's just, you know, we're just keeping in mind this, like all the elections together is what matters for the composite. This narrows it down just a little bit for you. So you're not, because if the numbers were flipped, I mean, you can get a feel for where you're going. It doesn't tell you for sure how it's going to go. Thank you, Mr. Brace. Okay, um, let me add some stuff to what has been said and give you some reasonings behind some of this. Um, what we worked on last night was to give you some uh, multiple ideas to work with. Um, we have created, as I think several members have acknowledged, we've created some thematic maps for you of some of the house districts, because that's what we had last night. Um, of and showing you in typical red and blue fashion of where are the Republican votes, where are the Democratic votes, by which margin it is at the precinct level for the various districts that were the closest in the composite index. Um, and so we've got those, we're working on Senate plans, uh, the most recent Senate plan uh, this morning to also show that. Now, what Kent is showing you and what is in the data set, it's important to realize you're looking at two different things. Um, one is the active matrix has a composite index. Right now, what Kent's showing you on the screen, it says performance index, but that is in essence the composite index that Dr. Hanley had created utilizing all the election results that are showing on the tab. For the purposes of the composite index, you see that in the active matrix. That's the only place that is there. The composite index, the composite scores are not in the database. And uh, so it's, it's, it's there in the active matrix to review the district level material. Down at the block level um, and at the precinct level, what you have is the data that is then being utilized when you assign territory and assign precincts or tracks or whatever. And that ends up uh, uh, making changes into the active matrix, but it, uh, and it will change the performance index there, the composite index, but you don't see the composite index numbers in the data set right now. Understood. Thank you, Mr. Brace. Yep. All right. Commissioner Vallette, uh, any other discussion or uh, Commissioner Weiss and then back to Commissioner Vallette. Do we have the information you brought? I think the numbers are interesting. That's for 2016. What about 2020? Is there a way to compare? I mean, I'd like, like take it any district. I don't care. And bring up the 16s and then show me the 20s. Just I think out that's of curiosity. That, I, right. Commissioner Weiss, right. I think and that's that, a great... Great question. And that, that is there also. So you can select any of the individual contests and see those. And what I've mentioned to Kent is that you can end up using that. Um, you can use uh, the individual contest and change the labeling so that you can see those uh, on the label when, when Kent moves into the precinct and that will let you change so that you can see the 2016 or the 2020 election results or any of the other ones that are there on that active matrix. You know, the presidential votes or the U.S. Senate votes or, or even that, uh, that Democratic primary vote um, uh, can be shown in terms of the, of the labels on the geography. Just a reminder to commissioners and consultants um, not to speak over each other. I know it can be difficult when um, some members are joining remotely versus in person, but it makes it very difficult for our interpreters when um, people are speaking over each other. So thank you. Thank you for that reminder, Mr. Stigall. Okay, on the screen, what we're looking at right now, I just zoomed out, um, but you got the red and blue number from 2016. At the county level, it's going to show it. We zoom in and show it at the township level. We zoom in and it shows it at the precinct level. 
down here, I just highlighted a district because that was on the screen. This would be the 2020 election. This is the 2016 election. So we have the, the gross results for the entire district, but we can only label, mm -hmm. use this red and blue label on one election at a time. So we could go in there and change it to 20, 2020 or 2012 or Senate or um, a pr the primary, whatever um, any commissioner would like or what maybe Mr. Adelson has input as to what would be the best barometer of what may happen. Yeah, I think that would be, I think there's there's pros and cons to each one is what I'm hearing from Mr. Adelson. And I think that was the question, Commissioner Weiss. Did you, do you feel like you've got the information you were asking about? I think so, but I guess my, I don't know how to ask the question. If you compare 2016 when you're moving some of these around, and then if you took the 2020s, could that change that back the other way? I, I, I guess that's the best way I can ask my question. Mr. Adelson? I mean, I would think that, of course, there are uh, possibilities, probabilities that numbers turn out vote preference can change per election. And I think the way I look at this is the, it facilitates um, reducing the population deviation while at the same time not um, interfering with the choices that you'll be making about which districts uh, move the partisan fairness metric. So I know it's a very delicate balance. But this is, I believe that this, from what I've seen of the maps, and I just looked at them for the first time a few minutes ago, that they provide an additional method to just make easier what we were attempting yesterday. And certainly I, I would concur if, if, as a comparison, to look at the results from two elections, they may reflect that the the, if you use 2016 to 2020, for example, they could reflect that the partisan choice is the same, but the margin is different. So that may still be helpful in making these adjustments. Thank you, Mr. Adelson. Commissioner Lang and then uh, Mr. Brace. And I was wondering if you could just give us a quick example of that so it shows Commissioner Weiss, what he's talking about, and I would also like to see it myself, say in where the number 65 is in that township, if you could do the 2020 compared to the 2016. I just want to get an idea myself, and I think it might help Commissioner Weiss if we were able to see it. Yes, I can do that. But all this is going to, all this is for is to get you pointed in the right direction as to what to try. I think the composite index, the performance index, shows you the grand result of all of them. So you can spend the time looking at the 12 and the 16 and the 20 and then trying to figure out in your head what's best. Or you get an idea what might work, assign it and see what happens. So this is these numbers help you move along quicker rather than analyzing all the election data at once. Is that not right? Commissioner Lang, I see you nodding your head. Does that feel does that feel like a more complete explanation? Oh, I would still like to see it just for sakes of when okay. I go to sure. do it myself, I know how. Okay, here we go. So we come over here to edit tools. We go to labeling. Um, we'll remove that, remove that. I think all this has to be removed. So then we go down to the election that we want to uh, review which is, there's a presidential 16, I'm guessing no, the 20 may be higher. There it is. So we select presidential Democrat 20, press the blue button, add Democrat. We come to presidential 20, Republican, that's, that's not uh, the Republican, Republican. There it, it is now. <laughs> so we hit add Republican. Okay, so those are the red blue numbers that are gonna pop up. I'm going to hit save right here and give it a name. So I don't have to do that every time. So I, and let's just make it all caps. So that's called press 20. And then um, I don't know if I hit apply, but so let me get back here and hit apply. That would do it. Now we click in. So it should. Yeah, those numbers did change. Um, 
because this one, yeah, this one was 1,144 red in 16, because that was the demo I was showing earlier. If you remember this precinct. So it shows you a little bit of difference. And you can go through all the elections like this. But, you know, for the sake of brevity or moving through all these districts, I think the idea is you, you pick an election that may be a bellwether for how that precinct voted. My guess, if that, those precinct num numbers are 50-50, you really don't know which way it's going to go. But when you see 1,200 plus and 736, my guess is that's a red precinct, at least for the last eight or 12 years anyway, because the numbers are significantly different. Here, this little precinct here, yeah, I'm guessing it could swing back and forth. Um, that's still a 10%, over a 10% difference. But the point being is, if the numbers are disparate, then that's probably how it's been for a few years. Thank you, Mr. Stegall. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Brace. I want uh, Commissioner Weiss to also just chime in here. Did you have something that you wanted to share? I, I guess what I'm looking at, what you were saying down on the percentages down there, if, if I read this, uh, like in uh, 65, in 2020, it was 49.7 for Biden. But then you go to... Uh, 2016 for Clinton, it was 49.43. It did drop a little. I guess that you've answered my question, but could it be in a particular district if we were to swap, let's say it's close, but then the next election, it goes drastically one way. And if we use that information, doesn't that change what we're trying to do? That's why we keep an eye on the index. All this is for is to kind of give you an idea of what may or may not work. Ultimately, like Mr. Adelson was saying, you keep an eye on these numbers. For example, this one right here. You know, if I wanted to raise this number, I would move this district out because 40 I know is high on population. If I wanted to lower this number, I would go and find a precinct that has the blue number on top. Um, this one or, you know, this one, if I move this out of 40, then that would lower. Now it's a tiny precinct, so it probably wouldn't do much, but that's the idea. It just gets me pointed in the right direction. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, it answers my question. I just was curious. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that explanation. Mr. Brace, do you have something to add to this? Uh, <clears throat> yes. The thing to keep in mind is that if you look at the overall election results, <clears throat> the 2016 election was the closest one of all three presidential ones. So that gives you a much uh, closer look at where a precinct might make a difference because that's the closeness that is there in the 2016 results. It was not as close um, in 2020 or in 2012 so it gives you some barometer, but Kent is right. You need to ultimately look at the overarching composite to see whether you're really swinging the district or not. You could end up swinging it a little bit in a given election, but really taking a look at what is going on on the overall timetable is the key. And keep in mind what I've always said to you, uh, to all of you, is remember that and that matrix that the, or not the matrix, but the stepping stones that I talked about early on is the difference in terms of the composition and the votes takes place at each stage of the stepping stone. So it will be different in presidential versus non-presidential election years. And it'll be different in presidential vote versus US Senate vote or governor's vote. All thank of you, those Mr. Brace. Thank you very much. We, yeah, and thank you for the reminders. This has been a useful, instructive session. I do want to try to get it back to Commissioner Vallette so she can begin. Um, she is doing our um, uh, plan deviation, working on plan deviation. We did need the, to understand right, the, the area that we had chosen. And, and by the way, we're working towards 5% plan deviation. We're at 8.76, significant reduction from yesterday already. 
So we're, um, and we're just in that area 60, but I think you were suggesting Commissioner Vallette, you were thinking about maybe a different area or do you feel like you have enough tools now that you might want to stay in this area? The floor is yours. Well, I didn't think that 65 was on our list, but. 65 is not, 60 is. Right, okay. So and, and 40 3, is also high. Well, they're both high. So I I'm sorry, I just don't understand this. It's it's understand it is it is it's a lot of complexity. I mean, I thought I was confused before and then you guys talked and now I'm like I have no idea. I kind of wish you just talk English because <laughs> I don't understand what you guys are talking. It, it, yes, it is a lot, Commissioner Vallette. Would you like some assistance? Please. Okay. Commissioner, uh, General Counsel, please. Let, let me take, uh, good morning to the commission, first of all. And Commissioner Vallette, just for clarification, are you asking for uh, English as uh, rel relative to the partisan, the partisan data? Well, I thought we were... Um adjusting the population right for the equal population and for the the partisan data the usefulness of it will be that the commissioners will be able to see the uh the breakdown by precinct so that if the commission would like to make changes relative to partisan issues that that can happen but for the the equal population i think it really is what the commission was doing yesterday uh, which is, again, shifting that population over to try to balance out the population between districts and improve that, that uh, overall plan, uh, the overall plan deviation. Is that helpful? <laughs> well, I know what I'm supposed to do. I guess I just don't understand how I'm supposed to do it. And, and, and my recommendation for that through the, the chair to Commissioner Vallette would be to start with a precinct on the border between those two districts and, and look at that number and, and how that will shift and, and adjust, uh, adjust your, your uh, total population in both those districts. Commissioner Orton. Um, maybe I'll just give you my thoughts of the <laughs> process, maybe in English. What I think we need to do is move um, some, let's see how, how many, about 3,000 people from District 60 through District 40 and then into 65 and it's going to have to spread out. So you have to move it that way, but that's going to be tricky because we worked on these districts to get the, to get the balance and right. it might be might be tricky, but I think we just try with a few precincts or maybe even blocks and see what happens and see if it works, might not work. And Commissioner Vallette, you can't break it, right? We've done this before where we've, right? We've, well, I'm not we've tried it. Worried and... I'm going to break okay. it, but. You can do it. <laughs> so you're suggesting I take population out of 60 and put it in 40. Commissioner Orton is going to try to uh, work with you together on this one. Can I sit here? Yes, you may. Let me give you, for example, just to kind of give it heads. Like you see this number here, 1178, that's the partisan vote. That is kind of similar to this one. So if you moved, this is not maybe the right precinct to move, and I'm not suggesting it is, but if you move this one to here, and then that one to there, um, equal. my guess it would be pretty, it'd be an equal swap and you could ripple it. Um, and there's other examples, maybe. Uh, Mr. Stigall, it look, also looks like whatever number's on top, whether it's red or blue, is the one that has the most. Correct. So that may be also a useful shortcut. But just, you know, passing similar numbers, just like total pop. If we're pop, passing similar vote results across or improving them, then we can quick get it. Commissioner Bellette, you have the floor and it looks like Commissioner Orton wants to share, yeah. Could we see the partisan, the two, uh, two columns? So 
so looking at this picture, if we moved, say, a precinct that is more Republican than Democrat out of 60, this number here should go up micro amount. It certainly won't go down. And then we oh. do this past a similar precinct over to here and keep the percentages about the same. Thank you, Mr. Stegall. Commissioner Orton, and then I'm going to get it to Commissioner Weiss. I'm just wondering if you could zoom out a little bit so she can see the shape of the whole thing. And if I'm not mistaken, it's okay to just be quiet for a little bit and just let, let us think. Could you zoom in so we can see the population, precinct populations now? Maybe on the top half, bottom half. Bottom half, you think? Okay, it would only show two numbers. So let me get it where we need it to be. So I have a question. The population would be those two numbers combined, right? No, population. that would be the election results, the total votes cast. Because that's the... So it'd be similar to the population. No? It, it's not. The composite score for the election results is not similar. So maybe let's, let's oh, go back. Composite. So oh. let's record the number, the population. Maybe that's what I'm hearing you ask, Commissioner Orton. Is that right? You want to mm -hmm. get the record? We're going to. So if you just move to the overview, please, from move from the. Yep. And we're just going to record the, the total so, population deviation. In, in answer to Commissioner Orton, I think you can derive by the elections looking at this, you know, if you got 1,500 people voting, it's probably going to be about, I don't know, what, 3,100, 3,500, 4,000 people in that precinct. Mm -hmm. It's just a guess. <laughs> okay, could we, could we have those, um, how it was before with the partisan numbers? This is the pre presidential 16. Um, I'm going to zoom in the bottom half and to get the numbers. This from this one. And then we'll just slowly roll up if that helps any. Yeah. I mean, this is a narrow area, so I'm guessing you probably wouldn't want to go across here. Just throwing it out there. And then again, we can always assign it and then undo it. It's not cast in yeah, stone. Let's just try some. So, give so can we move the 745 with the 665 and switch it with eight? From, right from 60. I found it. Okay, right here. So, we're going to put that in 40. Oh, just move it over into 40. Okay. To do but you know okay so now 60 is a decent number and we'll take a quick look at the focus minority rates 60 is 50 you know you lowered a little bit but it's still right at about 52 percent to 48 percent so it moved it um didn't really harm this number so much could we see it zoomed out just a little bit more to see the shape Okay, move from 60 above the one we just moved, um, the two lines to the east or the, in the west, sorry. I, I'm sorry, uh, where am I headed now? Give me a number. Um, the 765 and the 767. Move these two over? Yes. Okay. See, that dropped that because those were more Democrat than Republican votes. So it lowered it. It's still over 50. We go back to the overview and look at 60. 
actually uh, 60 is too low now. Oh. So in, in general terms, you want to either do all three of these are about the same population. So probably one or two of these and no more. I see your hand, Mr. Brace, but I want to just, before I call on you, I just want to make sure um, we are moving the population, right? The goal is to move it. So it's not, yeah. So we don't need to sort of get the play-by-play -play total, right? Because there's there's a shift going on. So we're in transition. Okay, Mr. Brace. Um, yes, the um, Kent, if you can um, flip between the, um, the short minority report tab and the statewide tab, you'll see you get the performance index on the on the minority, uh, but the composite index is really what is on that statewide tab. And That's help us understand, Mr. Problem. Brace, what that means. What are, help us know why you're uh, lifting that up. The the composite the composite index there on the statewide tab reflects all the election results. And what is the aggregate numbers of those composite results? The what is shown on the focus minority race uh, tab is a more limited composite index, in essence. Okay. Do either of them do either of them help us see the population deviation? Uh, no, that's only on the okay. overview tab. Yep. Thank you. It can. Can you, um, from 40, add 745, 665 back into 60? Yes, ma'am. So with that now, 60 is 4% low. And um, do from 40, 767, back into 40, the one right alongside back of it. Into yes. 60. Back into 60. That, yeah, that, I, I did it backwards. I'm sorry. Oh, darn. <laughs> darn, because that was a really good number. <laughs> well, they're still pretty close to the same. So let me see if I can do this like it's supposed to be done. Now, to go back to 60, my guess is still going to be similar. So 60 is virtually ideal, and then we're going to pass 40 in a moment. Look at the focus minority race. 60 is still is 51 and a half, a little over 51 and a half compared to 48 and a half. It percentage Democrat, Republican. The numbers are... Um, I guess is the total votes. Am I, is that not total votes? 251,000? Yes. That, so you're, you're looking at roughly um, 21, 22,000 uh, more votes Democrat than Republican. This one here. Mm -hmm. um, would you add from 65? From 40 to 65. Yes, yeah, so now I'm we got sorry, from 40 from to 65. 40 to 65. And I mean, you know, you can still even then move some to 67 or 68 or so, so you can continue passing can across. Can I see the numbers? Yes, ma'am. Um, where about up in here? I mean, I'm just trying to you gotta be zoomed in to show the precinct numbers. So that's one township up here. Can we see the partisan spreadsheet on the bottom? Yes. So just going by percentages, um, I think you need to be moderately careful about moving more Democrats out of 65 than Republicans if you want to maintain this differential. Wait, zoom out. Is it? It's 40 that we want to move out of. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You can zoom back in now. <laughs> so I'll zoom in at the top of it, and then we can work our way down. If you see something you want to do there again, I would be more careful if you want to maintain this differential 
you know, to, to move a bigger red number out than blue number. Can you go back up north? We don't want to do the highest. How much population are we over? I believe it was 6,000. No, yeah, 5,840, three and a half percent. I'm going to hit the info button on this precinct and quickly glance at the total pop. That's 1,800 people. You'd be moving 1,800 there. You'd be moving 3,000 here. This precinct has 3,300. This precinct goes all the way across the district. So unless you're going to use blocks, um, you wouldn't move the whole precinct. That precinct has 2,800. All right, I'll shut up now. Scroll back up and in a little so we can see again. This one. If you do this one, you can get okay. Kid up on the north. Can you move north just a little? Okay, so um, those two, the five sixty eight and the seven sixty one. Okay, I'll do them one at a time. If that's okay. Four thousand, and we'll do the next one. That puts you at one point one percent. Okay. And now you can move. You know, sixty-five would have to move, just redistribute it to the neighbors. Okay. So, can you put the one you just, the last one, back into forty, and move the one north of that? Okay. This is the last one. This right. the last one I put into 65. All right. Um, put it back into 40. Put it back into 40. Yes. And move the one that says Detroit Metropolitan Airport. Okay. No, probably won't. So here's the deviations for 40. That this number went down up 1.5%, I think. Your, your deviations overall for 40 are still, you know, about 1% over. So it's, it looks to me like this district and this district, um, I mean, precinct are about the same total population. The difference is this has 761 uh, blue votes. This had 360 red votes. This was the opposite, basically. 935 red votes, 490 blue votes. So when you took this one out, it lowered the... It, when you move this district over here, it lowered this number. When but you it's move still this a Democrat district advantage. Over, precinct over here it increased that number so it looks like 65 needs population is that in the area oh that is it mm -hmm. That's so light so it still needs oh no it's over mm -hmm. so it needs to give population right you have a few potential recipients um for 65 numbers, like 67 can hold a chunk. 
um, I think 66 can still hold some. 60, sorry, did that one. 62 can hold some. So basically all these can hold some of data. Thank you, Mr. Segal. Commissioner E, did you want to try to get into? Yeah, <clears throat> I just want to say by taking the airport, the, the Detroit airport out of 40, uh, we're creating kind of this weird strip in between Taylor and Romulus. Uh, I don't understand why we would. And we've got a huge Willow Run Airport and Detroit Metro Airport. I think that's a huge community of interest that they actually share, right? So it's just like the idea that like one community of interest and another, that's an economic community of interest that is wonderful, potentially. Which, which airport are you talking about? Willow Run and Detroit Metro. Where's Willow Run? Willow Run, just north of Belleville. Nope, nope, nope. Up, up, up. North 65, northwest corner, Bell, no, northwest of Belleville, Willow Run Airport. What's the population of 20? Twenty is pretty much even, so you could move some numbers there if you were really wanted to. And it is the it's you know seventy percent Democrat, so whatever you put in there is not going to really lower that make a difference. Janice, is it okay if we scroll in? Maybe that part of Romulus should be with the airport. It would make it okay, a little better. So we're putting it back. Well, um, can you scroll in and see how much is in the that part of 20? Can you, yeah, can you kind of estimate population in that piece? We'll look right at it. It's 1,900 people in 20. Um, so if there's 1,920, so it would drop it down to a negative percentage if you've moved it south. It's an option. Mr. Chair? Uh, General Counsel. We'd also like to note that I... I know Mr. Stigall has, has, has zoomed out uh, per the request of the commissioner, but when we were in closer, those two districts, um, the partisan uh, balance between the two of them was such, thank you, uh, was such that they balance the, commission, each other. <laughs> the commission is clearly not reaching out in that manner um, to, to affect uh, one party or the other. So I just wanted to highlight that for the record. Thank you for that observation. Thank you. Commissioner Vallette, back to you. Put that into 65. Mm -hmm. Okay, to the north, the Romulus, put that into 65. Take this area and put into 65? Yes, please. Okay, 65 is 6,900 high, 20 is 1,800 low. Can you, can you reverse that, take it back out, put it back into 20? Commissioner Eid? Kind of interesting, when you made that change, it uh, increased the black voting age population by about 0.1. This 20 was one of the, the VRA districts. So we should just be careful with that. It went from 35.8 to 35.9 by taking that part of Romulus out and putting it into 65. So maybe this that helps. This is predominantly white then, that's what it means. So maybe that helps your argument of we need a little bit of padding in those VRA districts. It, it does seem like that. And if we under or overpopulate based on VRA, right? We are within our, that's, that's a justifiable reason. You're doing a lot of work here, Janice. Keep going. Thank you. Just a quick glance at this. This precinct here um, is 1,400 white combined, and the total population is 3,100. So this is predominantly non-white precinct. I, I don't know if that weighs in anywhere. And... Is, and it's a blue, blue is bigger than the red here. So it is definitely a Democrat precinct. 
and the population is over. In District 65, it is over. But before we put that in, it was under, or was it? No, was so uh, if you put it in, it'll just be, it'll continue to be over um, and it just may. Oh, that's right, we need to. Yeah. Okay, so 40 is good though. So we need to move that population over to the, to any of these. So 67, 68, 66, 62. Can we, can we see the population of those? The total population for these features. Uh, no, I mean the, um, the deviation. On yes, ma'am. I'm those sorry. Districts. Here we go. Um, you're talking about 67, 68, 66. So 66, 67 can hold population, 68 can hold population. So were those VRA districts? Is there any commissioner who can help answer the question that Commissioner Orton just gave or our consultants? Are there any of those districts? Go ahead, Commissioner Eden. 67 is not uh, for for African Americans, there are a significant amount of Asian Americans in there. Same thing with 68 and 69, but there's no, it's not a VRA district like how the Detroit ones were. Thank you, Ms. Commissioner Eden. Mr. Adelson, do you want to chime in? Yes, and I think the, the Commissioner Eden's last point, yeah, this is not the same as the Insward Detroit districts. However, the minority population uh, across the board, it's a coalition district similar to what was done in the Grand Rapids area, but it's not, there's no majority of one race here, but it is, it, there are still VRA considerations here. So some things to consider, but um, at the moment, we're gonna stick with um, helping Janice get through the, the population deviation and juggling all the things she's juggling. So uh, you have the floor, Commissioner so Vallette. Can you zoom in under south of 68? Um, take the 553 and the 816 and put maybe them. One at a time. Maybe. Okay, do one at a time. Do 553 five, into 68. 553 five, five, into 68. So that just brought 68 to 131 over. 65 is down now to 2,900. And our plan deviation is dropped overall as well too. So 8.76 from nine point something. So okay. 65 is still almost 3,000 high. Maybe you could go to blocks and just move a few. Okay, can we go to blocks? Uh, would you want to just try a single pre? Let me look at the info. We will. I'm just going to. This precinct here has 22,770. Okay. So move that into 68. Okay. Now, 16, 68 is uh, 2,900 high. 65 is correct. I mean, Closer to ideal. I don't know what you're saying. So I think now 68 is the high one that takes us out of deviation. So we need to move some of 68 to so I see something that's the blocks there and put it back. Or no. move. Um, it needs to go on further. So it could go to 66 or 69, it looks like, or 67. Something from here. Maybe that's the wrong side. Thing. Commissioner Eid, have you done any work in this area, in the Ann Arbor area? Because we are working at between 68 and 69. That's where Commissioner Vallette is right now. Any thoughts on this? Maybe that can go somewhere. This one here. Well, I have a lot of thoughts on it. Okay. Um, or Commissioner uh, Witches. So I just want to. Think, I think doing this <coughs> first might, okay. be, might be helpful. Okay. Please proceed, Commissioner Vallette. Can you move north a little? Uh, 
Commissioner Weiss. Ken, could you blow up enough to see that Willis? I'm kind of curious what. That looks like a 50-50 right. district. And if we get the precinct, we get the information on that single precinct, that's 1,887 people. We could try that, Janice, if maybe you would like to try that, put Willis into from 65 to 67 and see what it does. But 65 is good, good. population. We're trying to move out of 68. Yeah. I think what he well, was what referring was to, to was undo one. Yes, of undo that. I forgot to tell you that. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. You can do that. Try that. Okay, Commissioner Bell. Let's try that. Okay. And then Commissioner Witches. I'm going to assign this precinct to 67. Correct. And you know, 65 is low now, but you can take some back from over here, I think was the idea. Okay. Take the 818 and put it back into 65. So now um, 65 is 1.7% low, 66 is 0.49% high 67 is 1.56 high 68 is 0.14 percent high so those there's still some room to move but those are all within our deviation that we want absolutely all under two percent commissioner which is your microphone wasn't on did you want to say something um, sorry no I'm thinking out loud very good then um how you feeling commissioner Vallette? I just want to lift up that there was a lot of support and, and really appreciate the courage you took to, to do that. And, and I recognize too, I just want to acknowledge it for our online commissioners that we know it's, yeah, when we're, when we're in person, it's a lot easier. So we know that there's, it's, it's much more difficult for y'all out there. Um, just appreciate the courage that y'all are doing. Okay. Taking uh, commissioner witches. Um, one thing that I could potentially suggest here is 67 and 65. Um, the area that's to the west of Willis, that's part of 65 right there, that potentially north, adding that in with 67 could bring the, uh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm saying that backwards. 67 is high. Never mind. I was so, looking at it in the uh, wrong yeah, direction. I think you're on the right thing. We could just do, we moved Willis in, but maybe we could just turn go to blocks and just move part of it back, then that will even it out, yeah. What's the population of that precinct that was just added in with the 493 into 443? Just a minute, my uh, laptop here was- Because if it's- It's, if it's, it's sorry. What I call spinning right now. It's, and now we're getting there. See how it's slow. But that, so save after that, it'll let you. <laughs> that Willis precinct has 1,887 people in it. And I'll get to the block level as soon as it catches up. Once, uh, I'd like to see what it would look like if you take the southern portion below Willow. Uh, um, I can't think of that road right now, and I used to live there. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 the southern portion south of Will is off. Okay, just a minute. I'm going to save and try to back out of this before it totally collapses.
as uh, not really surprised at this arrow. I'm going to close it all the way up, shut it down, and start it back up. At this point, I wonder if we can um, uh, acknowledge that yes, yesterday um, we did not approve minutes that we we could have. We were pretty tired at the end of the day, um, and there are four draft sets of minutes. Um, without objection, I suppose I would ask us to move to um, item number seven on our agenda for the day, and it does say. Um, approval of minutes, note to approve. And I believe that refers to yesterday's. So without objection, hearing none. I would like to proceed to the approval of the minutes from September 23rd, the first and second meetings, as well as September 24th and 27th. Are there proposed edits to the draft minutes that have been provided? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the first commission meeting held in Mount Pleasant, Michigan on September 23rd? So moved. From Commissioner Witches and second from Commissioner Lett. Oh, Commissioner Weiss, thank you. All in favor of approving the min commission minutes from the first meeting on September 23rd, 2021, signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed signify by raising your hand and saying nay. The ayes prevail, the motion is adopted. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the second commission meeting held in Mount Pleasant, Michigan on September 23rd? So moved. Commissioner Witches? Second. Commissioner Lett, thank you. All in favor of approving the commission minutes for the second meeting of September 23rd, 2021, signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed signify by saying nay. The ayes prevail, the motion is adopted. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the commission meeting held in Mount Pleasant, Michigan on September 24th? So moved. Commissioner Witches? Second. And Commissioner Eid? And second. All in favor of approving the commission minutes for September 24th? Oh, there's a... We did... We... Yes, I'm about to call the, um, the vote. <laughs> All in favor of approving the commission minutes for September 24th, 2021, signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 All opposed signify by raising your hand and saying nay. The ayes prevail, the motion is adopted. Finally, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the commission meeting held in Detroit, Michigan on September 27th? So moved. Commissioner Witches first. Second. Commissioner Lett, second. All in favor of approving the commission minutes for September 27th, 2021, signify by raising your hand and saying aye. aye. All opposed, signify by raising your hand and saying nay. The ayes prevail, the motion is adopted. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, we will now return back to our mapping agenda item, excuse me, unfinished business uh, item 5A. So I recovered a plan and this was what we, this came back into 68, so it should be, or it had been reassigned to 65. Go ahead and reassign it. Who's, who's helping direct Mr. Stigall? Yes, that would be, that's where we were, so yes, that would be good. I got a head nod. <laughs> I'm sorry. Need to do better, I suppose. Okay, um, the last I heard was Commissioner Witches referring to south or somewhere in here. Yeah, in District 67, the area south underneath Willis, let's remove that on the block level and see if that gets it uh, closer. Everything south Correct. of Lincoln, yep. Paint Creek, Willis line you got it. goes back into 65.
Okay, so now 65 is just 1,000 low or 1%, 105%. 67 is 0.86% high. The focus minority information, if it was in play there, I don't know that it was. 65 is 52.84% Democrat, 67 is still 75 plus. Kent, while we're in the area, there was a discontiguity in Celine that showed up. Maybe we could just fix it while we're here. Yes, ma'am. This um, this census block, I suppose, should be in 68. Yes, please. At some point today, we probably should do this on this whole plan before we finish up and just get it all right. Duly noted. Commissioner Orton. I wonder if someone made note of the plan deviation, how much of a difference this we made. From 9.8, I believe, down to 8.76. Great. And that was on Commissioner Vallette's turn. Um, I believe, are we in the middle of something or are we ready to move on to the next commissioner? But it looks like we need a break first. Um, let's take a 10 minute break. It is currently uh, 1048. Let's come back at 11 o'clock. So we'll take a 12 minute break. Uh, without objection, hearing no objection, we're going to recess until 11 o'clock. Thank you, commissioners.
a.m. I'll ask the Secretary of State to call the roll, please. Commissioners, please stay present when I call your name. If you're attending today's meeting remotely, please disclose during roll call that you are attending remotely, as well as your physical location. I'll start with Doug Clark. I'm present and I am attending remotely today from Rochester Hills. Juanita Curry. Present and I am attending remotely from Detroit, Michigan. Anthony Ede. Present. Brittany Kellum. Rhonda Lang. Present, attending remotely from Reed City, Michigan. Steve Lett. Present. Cynthia Orton. Present. MC Rothhorn. Present. Rebecca Zatella. Janice Vallette. Present. Aaron Wagner. Present, attending remotely from Charlotte, Michigan. Richard Weiss. Present. Dustin Witches. Present. 11 commissioners are present and there is a quorum. Excellent, thank you, Secretary of State. Um, I believe we are moving on. Uh, was there, um, yeah, where were we? Were we, um, Mr. Zitigal, do you wanna uh, review where we are? Okay, I'm, I'm just opening the plan back up. I kind of shut it all down and restart it. Thank you. It's kind of a cautionary step. Understood. Thank you. I do believe we are moving on to Commissioner Weiss next. So well, after we get the review from Mr. Stigall, it'll I'll hand the floor over to you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Weiss. All right. Before I get into too much trouble, I, I, I thought I spotted something. And would you go down to area or District 60, about in right where it just kind of comes up, and then put the uh, figures on the numbers? I thought I spotted something that might be interesting. Well, we have a misassigned block here. I'll take care of that quick. Move that into 60. Well, wouldn't that have to go into 40? Or 40. I'm sorry, yes. it's already in 60. That's the problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fix that quick. Eagle Eye Weiss again. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, Commissioner, where are we hit it? Well, I'm thinking it's right about where your cursor is. If you could put the figures up. Uh, the population or the voting uh, numbers that we had up to red and blues. Okay. And we'll do it at the precinct level. All right. S scroll to the right a little. Unless I, I could have swore I seen something that said 510 and 510. But I don't see it now. I wonder if it was that little no, piece there. No, no this, because it would have been up closer to where 22 is, where we would have been able to move it into 22, but I don't see it now. Go up a little farther, maybe. Yeah. I don't see where it went. Okay, never mind. MC, could you give me like the list you have? And I will, and I'll ask uh, other commissioners. Hold, just like what's next, maybe. Yep, I think we just finished 60 there, and I think we want 35, 6, 16, and 17. That's what I have, commissioners. Anybody else have anything different? That's what I have. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Orton. All right, let's, first one was what, 35? 35, 6, right. 16, or 17. And there was a, um, a suggest or a comment during the break that um, we may have up, um, Upper Peninsula, um, the upper the UP, any of those areas that might be a pretty quick deviation shift. Okay. And this is thirty five right here. 
So I guess we have to obviously fill in, take from someplace. So what around it has excess? 110 has uh, quite a bit. Director okay. Hammersmith, did you want to try I to get in? There's... Um, just to mention that you have a partisan fairness map also for that. So you've got a visual you can look at that might help you as you move. Is this the... Um... The PDFs that were sent by Mr. Brace and uh, I think passed around. Okay. Commissioner Lang, you have your hand. You just said there was a conversation during the break where there might be another one up in the UP. Can I know what that is? We, we don't know. It was just that, that sort of like offhanded comment. Like, I wonder if any of these are up in the UP. We didn't have the maps up. So it was just a, one of those moments of like, oh yeah, that might be a good idea to consider. Okay. Thank you. So the 110 has population that it could uh, give up. I don't know if there's other ramifications to um, whatever populations or minorities may be in 110. Um, if you then blow that up where we can get the numbers for party wise, red and blue. Yeah. Okay. This, is, this is the shared area. I clicked on information wise, this would be a that, even flop right. pretty much. That's what that I was has, just looking at. That has 2,300 people in it. Could we uh, move that over, please, and see what it does? Want my eraser? I brought one. I got the ultimate eraser. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 35 went to 1.84% under, while 110. Uh, is 0. 0.61 oh, that, over. That looks pretty good, I guess. Um, do we need to run anything to see if that affected that area? Commissioner as as The uh, numbers? I think 110 is still clearly Democrat. Um, we're not 40, 35 is Republican. I, I don't know if that, that was an even 50 50 for that one election. So I don't know if that. Right. Change it one wondering. way or another. All right. So what's the next district we can borrow from? So I think it aren't these a VRA or something districts need to be careful with, I'm pretty sure. Commissioner yeah. Clark, I see your hand. We we can't hear you, Doug. Looks like you're on mute. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, that was the comment I was going to make. We can't touch 14 and 17. I think those would okay. be the other districts. Thank you. I see Commissioner Orton. I think Mr. Adelson, did you also want to try to get in? I, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Clark about the, the districts that he mentioned as being VRA focused. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Commissioner Weiss. Um, let's look at 36 then, see what we can do. I guess technically you could still take a little more from 110. Um, we got a fairly small area where it won't affect too much. I, I don't know. I mean, blow some of that up. We can get an information on this one. But Richard, um, yeah. sorry. Please. <laughs> if you take from 110, it'll help with that deviation as well yeah. because it's much farther out of balance. Yeah, 36, Commissioner. Yes, that's what I was saying. 36 would um it touches on one precinct right through here it's the only okay. place it touches it i zoom in a little bit looks like there's a lot of population in the area at the block level just by going looks like these are neighborhoods it could be industrial i guess well can we uh skim off some of those whatever we can do whatever you want to do well i'd like to start borrowing from that area Maybe going right at the bottom corner, right there, and then going left. Okay. And we'll work start. our way so far left and then so far up. Okay. 
This is a low, very low population right here in this corner. 93 people. <laughs> yeah, not much. So what yeah. highlight right through here yeah, on that main what, road? What, yeah, what's in there? How many we we can borrow? That entire area is not that many people. Yeah, well, go ahead and add it then. Okay. Okay, let's go. Let's go maybe a little north. Let's see what's there. I'm just going to highlight it. Sure. And then you can make a decision on how you want to approach it. Let me get, I'm going to follow that main road and you can yeah, take do, that, yeah, do whatever, follow the road. do what you want to do with it. So that, that block, uh, that yellow block right there contains 900 people. All right, let's add that. Okay. Now, now 35 is 0.49% low, 36 is 1.87% over. All right, suggestions, should we go left or go up a little bit? I believe the Commissioner Witches has a suggestion for you. Yeah, I was gonna say, since that population is pretty close now, I would look at District 69 to try and even out the population because it's pretty close. And I just wanna acknowledge you're doing a lot of good work here, Commissioner Weiss, but we're not shifting our overall plan deviation much. You're doing some good work. And I just wanna acknowledge maybe these are, do we know that the list that I had and that Commissioner Orton confirmed is the largest deviation still? Do we want to, what I'm thinking about Commissioner Weiss is because all that, right, it didn't shift our deviation much. And I'm wondering if we actually have the, the right list. Go ahead, Commissioner Witches and then Commissioner Eden. Well, but that's a work in progress. I mean, if we start taking down deviations of, of for example, 69 in Ann Arbor and 36, they're offset each other, but their deviation is around 2%. To so bring that down, your total deviation is going to go down. The Excellent. Why, so we're it's not, why it's not, going down now is because we're shifting the population and not fixing the final two to okay. get it down to close to zero as possible. Yep. Sorry. I'm being premature. Thank you. Commissioner Weiss, back to you. All right. Can we borrow a little more from 36? Should we go up or should we, or should I square that up and take it up squarely upwards? Commissioner Weiss, and I think I heard Commissioner Witch is suggesting moving population from 36 into 30, 69. Is that what you said, Dustin? All right, and you want to go ahead and tell me what you're thinking? You can even instruct Mr. Segal to do it. Well, I'm not really sure where I'm suggesting to take it. I'm just suggesting that that's a pretty even offset. So I would take, uh, I don't know, how about we take the northern section across 23, US 23, so Ann Arbor Township, and then... Um, follow the road uh no i'm sorry right where you are if you scroll down that that um the highway is to your west right there that's the uh highway so if you in in 69 we can go and grab north of that to place some of 36 into into 69 i would imagine are you suggesting this area through nope. here? Nope. Everything right from where your mouse pointer is right now. Yep. Well, go back down. I'm trying to do it just one row at a time. Okay. So if you move further east slightly, too far. Right. Nope. Just your pointer, not the not the map. Okay. Move one block over to the left. There you go. Take that over to the, 69. The, Correct. Okay.
and then keep going towards the right. Uh, this way or no, my right. right. Okay, you're right. I'm going to highlight them just to see what the numbers are, and then you can decide if you want to do it or not. So that's 332 people. Um, all of that is 400. Yep, keep going. So just keep moving across till we get a nice number. That's 530. Um, go all the way up to here. Let's or, not try to split that township. So let's keep going slightly north. This way? Yep. And then now grab the, the rest over to, uh, there you go. Okay. And try to stay out of that, that, that other precinct. Okay. That, that area highlighted is 1,080 people. Yep. So we need what, and 800 more. Huh? Well, 36 is 900 light now, too. They were offsetting each other. What's going on? Dustin, why don't you have them add it and then let's see yeah, what it does. It. Commissioner Orton? I'm wondering if something happened like yesterday because yeah, the numbers was, weren't like that. No, that something something squirrely just happened because 36 and 69 were offsetting each other by like a difference of 100. And now they're no longer doing that. I think he had to rebuild. Did he rebuild the plan to get that to? to see if that fixed it. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Hey, it looks like that got unassigned somehow. I don't know if it was in. That was 30, that was in 36. I'm going to put this into 36 where it belongs or where it had been. Okay, so that would go back into 36. Uh, Ms. Reinhardt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, hello, Commissioner Kellum. Could you disclose where you're attending remotely from today? Attending remotely from Wayne County, Michigan. Thank you. Continue to follow the that precinct line there and uh, see if we can get, yep, exactly. Another thing to remember is there is one priest, one district that's over in the Grand Rapids area that's like over by 6% right now. So that's causing a big skew here as well. <clears throat> that was way too much, wasn't it? Just do the bottom half of it. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's here's good. all of it. It's just a couple of hundred. That's and, fine. And that little sliver here. Yeah, let's add that. Then we can call that decent so we can keep a precinct to whole. This precinct actually goes all the way up. Here. Well, but not we're not breaking up a third one by going north. Okay. Now we have 69 is just 0.5 low and 36 is 0.4 high. So I keep it at that for now. I'd be done now. Thank you, Commissioner Weiss. Thank you. All right. Um, and that uh, that means we just completed 35. So 35 is off our list. Commissioner Witches, it is to you. All right. So let's go take a look at the one that I just mentioned. I think it is District 79. Oh, wait, no, now that one's fixed. What's going on? Hold on. 76 is 3.69 low. So maybe that's what you were looking at, this whole area. Commissioner Witches, is this a good time to sort of just review our list, make sure that we yeah, are working? Is that That's fine. Can you help us with that, Mr. Stigall? Sort of help us make a spreadsheet? We're...
and yes, and if you can save it to make sure that we've. So there is a deviation in the assigned. Oh no, that's not a unassigned. Sorry, go ahead. So I just sorted it by the deviation. So yeah. So 60 was at the top, but that means that's the lowest deviation. This is the highest. Okay, great. Um, so these are the largest deviations, which would be um, going all the way up to, I mean, I don't know if you want all these uh, just yet, but this is two and a half percent right here. Um, I guess you probably want to, and I imagine quite a few of them are the VRA. So I'm just going to read them off for us. The largest is 61. Then we have district six. I just, can read them. Oh yes, easier. please. Mr. I can, uh, yeah. So you're straining. Okay. The, the highest deviation was 61, then six, then 16, 17, 21, 76, 19, 73, 27, 55, 9, 59, 10, 29, 18, 4, 71, 72, 33, 86, 11, 12, 96, 52, 38, 107, 79. Thank, thank you, Mr. Stagall. I think, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I was getting to 2.5. Yeah, 2.51 so, was 38. So we have quite a number of districts to do to, to reach that 2.5% threshold. I see Commissioner Clark's hand. Yeah, well, why don't we just start with the 4% and above and then run the list again and make sure we got everything and then we'll run 3% and above and so forth. Excellent suggestion, Commissioner Clark. Commissioner Witches, do you feel like you have better direction? Oh, Commissioner Clark was asked, uh, just suggesting that we um, work from the list, um, the first 10, so to speak, and then we'll just run the list again, just like what we, yeah, so just go ahead. And, oh, sorry, Commissioner Orton. Well, another, another thought. I think that's a really good idea that we should do that, but maybe we should avoid the ones that we've worked so hard for, for VRA things. I know that like 16 and 17, I think, are in that area, maybe six. So what I'm hearing you uh, suggest, Commissioner Orton, is maybe identifying which districts we're not going to address and continue with those. So um, well, let's just Commissioner Orton, can, or excuse me, Commissioner Witches, will you help us sort of identify? Yeah, so 61, 6, 16, 17. But yeah, so let's just eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and let's pick one. So you, it's your, you have the floor. Let's go to district, let's see where district 55 is for right now. I'm going to leave that spreadsheet open so I can open it back up anytime we want. Okay, so that could be a VRA district. No, it's probably not. That's 55. Um, and a quick glance at the focus minority is it's 50, over 57% Republican. Which makes sense of the area. So and you district in the area that we okay, hold on a minute not huh? not oh yeah not not to, i'm not going to touch 26 yes so a quick look 54 is a little high 51 is 800 high 58 is 800 low so there can be movement on this side mm -hmm. um i don't know about 33 
33 is also 2,600 high, but I don't, that gets closer to your Pontiac Waterford area. 46 is high. So it's, we, we see fairly high numbers in this area. What is 56? 56 is just 600 over. 52 is over. So it looks like these, generally speaking, in the area are fairly on, on the positive side. So it'll take a more movement to get it dispersed. Okay, so let's, what about 92 and 56? 92 is 1400 low. So yeah, if you so move 58 to 92, 55 to 58. Yep, we can do that. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Ede? You know, these are all, you know, the other ones, they're over, but they're over by a very minimal amount. Since 55 is over, like if you were to move some of 55 into 58, yeah, you would be moving the deviation of 58 away from zero, but combined, you would be moving the whole thing towards zero. That's true. So, so I mean, because zero is not, we have to only get it down to 2.5. So, you know, you can normalize it between those two and it would bring it down overall and then later move it to the left. That is true. Commissioner Orton. Well, I think um, like, I don't know whether it was Kent or John were saying yesterday, it's easier to start at 92, grab some of 58, and then in 58, grab some of 55. You're kind of cutting out some steps and we'll get it over all the way. So we're actually transferring the data from the population number, not the people from 55 to 92 because 58 is already even, 92 is under. So really the extra population, the number, this can take it. Doing it here, I mean, it's a wash. We're just gonna take a little moment. I'm gonna change the color of 58 so you can see the difference right here. Okay. We're going to take the, 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 um, we're going to work with the precincts that are right um, there, correct? Let's zoom in on there for me, please. Commissioner Lang. I just have a quick question. Yesterday you made a move in, Kent, could you scroll out real quick? Just for a moment so I can see what I'm talking. A little bit more, please. Okay, yesterday you made a move where you took out a township in 92, is it, where DeWitt is? Yes, a township in 92. If that township was put back, wouldn't that, you're trying to get, are you trying to get population to 92? I think, I think the idea, they, they're trying to get it from 55 out of 55. But not to 92. Yes, to 92. It's just that 92 can accept it because of the move that was made yesterday. So, okay. um, but yeah. Okay. Never mind. Commissioner Orton. Yeah, Rund is right though. 97 can also accept more, more population. So, right. But it can, can scoot over, scoot over, scoot over. All right. So 55, we're going to assign... We're taking population out of 55. We're going to add, we're going to take, highlight those two uh, precincts that are on the west side of the township for me, please. A lot. That is 4,200. And that'll actually get 55. Pretty close. So 900 let's put, low. Let's put that into 58 for now. Okay, so now we got to move over to 92. And 92 needs, I can't see it. 
1400 and then where's 91 that's lansing so it's so actually working there 91 too. 92 and 97 can absorb population okay suggestions on which one or what part of 92 should receive the population from 58 i'm not from the area i know it's all relatively pretty rural for the most part i would imagine mm -hmm. that it would have to, it would want to be the northern side yeah i was going to say that ovid yep. community mm -hmm. that township with uh, meadow is it yep. shelbyville mm -hmm. so let's pop that in there shepherdsville commissioner lang i'm just going to be honest you guys are killing me here so now you're putting what was a full district into three different districts. How does this make sense when 190, the one Westphalia could have been left whole and you could have taken population from the county below it that would have had the same effect? I'm just, it feels like you're slicing and dicing and I am just having a really hard time with this. And I, I just I wanted to express my opinion. That's 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 fine. I don't really care too much about township boundaries currently in regards to uh, these things here. I'm working with the population, which is the most important piece. So if I need to make something and, and, and split something up, especially in an area here where I'm not going to be doing too much damage and keeping cities whole for the most part, I'm fine with doing that. So. Commissioner Clark, I see your hand, but I want to make sure that Commissioner Witches can actually do the work. Go ahead, Commissioner Clark. Yeah, just a quick comment. I mean, what Rhonda just mentioned, it's the same argument we had yesterday when we were talking about mineral, or it's the same discussion, um, breaking up COIs and breaking up townships and so forth for population. So, I, thanks. Commissioner Witches, well, you have the floor. Okay, but then to further that point, what piece of the ranked criteria are we working on right now? Number I one. would say number one. There right. we go. I, I, I agree, Dustin. All right. So let's take that township and the city that's – okay, hold on. Now I got my all out off track again because I'm trying to figure out where these things need to go now. So 58 is 3,400 over, and 92 needs population. So – uh let's grab just the top one here the the okay that that was 1500 people all of this together is 4600 so the one that you just added let's take that out okay but that is this area 92 okay so let's add that to 92 and i do it again So now 15, 58 is 1,889 over, um, 92 is even, 97 is a, little, is a little low, 91 is a little low. Okay, so Commissioner, Commissioner Weiss has a thought. Since you helped me, Dustin, I'll try to help you. Um, down in, if you scroll a little left, Kent, would you please? Uh, that township right down at the bottom there, you see 966489 total population to the left. Take your, yeah, the one right below it. What What is the population of that? Could that be put into 97? which would then take away from 92, but bring 97 up. The population of this township right here is 1,748, which would put 97 pretty close to 0% deviation. There you go. Let's do that. I guess go ahead and do it then.
So 97 is 88 over, 92 is 1600 over, while 15, 58 is 1800 over. Okay, so now we just take population from 58 and put it into 92 in the amount of roughly 1700 people. So let's find one. So I'm just going to select this area here. I think that was pretty high, wasn't it? Uh, let me, um, I think it was 2,500 or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, 3,000. Way too much. That would make 58, 1,200 under and would make 92, 1,500 over. Which would I guess be that much. would be. That would be to be doing the same change. percentages. Okay. Uh, um, can you zoom out a little bit for me, please? All right. So that is the upper limit that we have. So, Commissioner Orton. Well, try precincts. Well, the the precincts here are basically the same size as the township, so it's going to have to go down to blocks. Um, let's try grabbing. On a block level, I don't know where to start, but Commissioner E has a thought. Township Maybe. moving. Let's move down south from the border of ninety two in the north and the west. This area here, correct? Okay. Um, Commissioner E, do you want to try to? This is Bennett in the road. Yeah, I was just going to say I think you're you're close enough. Again. Yeah, I mean you're you're within what we're trying to get to, so it is two percent, and and right. we're trying to affect the overall plan deviation. And it's challenging. It's really right. challenging. But here, but I mean, I I kind of find it difficult if we have two adjacent districts that are plus or minus within okay. so close to each other. Okay, very good. This Mr. would be doing a, a service, I would imagine. So okay, so I see two hands in the room. Sorry, Dustin. Um, I see Commissioner Orton and then um, Mr. Stigall. Well, just to add to what Dustin said, um, on those certain districts that are that we've tried so hard to get VRA balance, um, we might not be able to get them within well, our two point five. So the closer true. we can get everywhere else is great. Correct. So right where the numbers are, we see four hundred five and two ninety eight. There's a line. So let's grab those blocks first, and if we need to, and just to the township uh, boundary. That was the precinct. Just a moment. Let me clear that and take another run at it. Commissioner Clark, do you have something to add? Yeah, I did. Uh, one of the things we might look at, there's a city that's on the uh, northwest boundary of these two districts, and that may have enough population in it. I, I didn't, couldn't catch the name of it. I can't see it on the screen right now. So this, this area here is 245 people. Uh, let's scroll down some. Yeah, there it is. There's the city further down. Okay, so now let's let's zoom out a little bit for me, please, Kent. Okay. Would that city be better served being with Lansing, or would yep. that city be better served being with Perry? Yeah, Langsburg or um, not Lansing. I'm sorry. With the, the with the Clinton County area. Correct. Langsburg and Clinton County do associate well with each other there. Yeah, I okay. think. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's undo no. that oh. particular piece and let's add Langsburg into it. So commissioner let may have a different opinion. Do you want to share that commissioner let? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Uh, commissioner, which is you have the floor. I have a feeling there's going to be quite a. Oh. So that's fourteen hundred people. Let's add that little. Um, plus this little piece we will have to grab. Let's add that in there too. Might as well see what it does. And then go ahead and assign it to ninety-two. Nice job balancing. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind leaving it at this particular level. This is much closer. I don't want to start looking for, well, unless I can find one that's 300 people. 
like if we can get another 300 people we would be wait a minute hold on 92 300 or 3000 no 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 300 because we have four, we're 456 over on one negative 200 so if we go 300 we'll be right around 100 people difference on each side that's true and i, I guess just i just want to caution that we have so many districts to balance and we we have done you've done some great work but we haven't moved the overall plan deviation yet and it's It'll just that there. time factor that i'm worried about that's fine we can okay. keep it we can keep it here that's, Thank you. And when we, if we need to make fine tune adjustments, either later or tomorrow, we can. Absolutely. So, or after our hearings, it's all all there too. So. Thank you, Commissioner Witches. Uh, Mr. Stegall, please. I wanted to. Uh, what Cynthia said earlier was exactly what I was going to say. You have districts in Detroit that, that are four percent, and you can't touch them. So, just getting these under two, you'll never get the plan down to two, because you always have those at four. Okay. So, you know, you got to push the, push the envelope with it. Okay. So are you, it's what Cynthia was saying and I was agreeing with her. Right. And I think, and what, so I just want to make sure that that is that also what commissioner witches was trying to do. Should we can just continue and spend the time? It's hard to know. I just, I just want to help us, you know, be as efficient and get the most bang for our buck. Um, commissioner Eden. I think we should move on. We're close enough. Uh, we're already trying to get these half of what's legally required because of those VRA districts. Um, so uh, I think we should just keep going on the list. And if we have to come back to it later to find, you know, tooth comb it, maybe after the public hearings, once we decide on a map, we can do that. Are we okay with that commissioners? Okay. I get, I'm getting some thumbs up. Commissioner Clark, we are to you. Um, okay. Let, yeah. Let's, let's do this before I choose a district. Let's look at 6, 16, and 17 and validate that they're VRA districts. And if they are, let's color code the, the Excel spreadsheet so we don't have to keep wondering about this. Mr. Stegall? 16 is that district. I'm pretty sure that's a VRA district. Yep. 17 is? 17. Um, I don't know. I, I, yeah, that... I believe was so, six, 17. Six is, 16. Uh, where is 16? Right there. Yep. And then, and then let's- Mr. Orton. Sorry, Yep, go so ahead. I, I do have one more thought <laughs> just to complicate things. Um, since we want to see, we've been advised to have that plan deviation down lower, but no matter how many we fix perfect, it's not going to go down if we have these big ones. And the problem is that these are the ones that we've tried so hard on for VRA balance. So I'm wondering, we could try to work on those to get them a little more in balance, which would be the only way to bring our plan deviation down. It would be really tricky and it might not work, but is it worth our time to try? I don't know. This is where I'd we need the work, experts. I'd say let's work on the others. Yeah, let's talk to the others, the, the experts. Good idea. Mr. Adelson has a, yeah, has yeah, My account. thought is twofold. I mean, I agree, Commissioner Warden, that just like with, with other areas that, that we can certainly try. I mean, whatever attempts are made, if they don't work out, if the numbers go askew, then we can readjust that. But I, I, I think that the trying, I think, is a good idea. And I take Commissioner Clark's point, too, that there are other districts that are that are also high. So uh, I would endorse both. I think both are great ideas. And, and for the moment, I think what Commissioner Clark, the, the, he's, he's helping us be systematic. And I think you were, um, Mr. Commissioner Clark, you were working with Mr. Stigall to sort of highlight the districts on yeah. the spreadsheet that we know. So if you could continue with that. Yeah, let's go um, to six. We'll come back to, yeah. I think six is a VRA. Yeah. Yes, confirmed. Yeah, it is. So add that. 61 we just did with Dustin, I believe, didn't we? Did we? I thought it was no, 55. Yeah, that's right. We, I don't think we did 61 yet. And that okay. is the lead. 
the largest percentage? Um, yeah, we're, we're 61 at. That's what we worked on yesterday. That's true. And if I remember correctly, um, we didn't sort of do the, the fine tuning. Um, so it is, it, it's, it is a, um, a district that was helped, that was adjusted, I think, because of partisan fairness. Okay. Um, so we, yeah. So let, let, let's go to 21. Let me see where that is. And then I'll choose between the two of those. That's another VRA district. Yep. With that so shape, it's got to be. Color code that one VRA. So then I guess I'll go back down to 61 and work. So that 61 is not a VRA district. It's so not. It is, um, yeah, it is a partisan at? fairness, though, district. A partisan fairness is what I was trying to say, Commissioner Clark. That we, you may be, um, you may oh, want to look right. at the, yeah, the adjustments uh, in in the electoral uh, results. Yeah, let's let's do that right at, at first. Sixty one. And it's not, yeah. Yeah. You got some freedom. I think if you stay out of forty yeah. and sixty, you may be. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to touch 40 and 60. I, I think if, if we move a little further west, and I hate to do this, um, then we'll be probably moving. Um, geez, then we, we'd be moving. Well, no, we've got 61. We've got over overpopulated. So we need to take some off of that. Yep. Almost so 4,000. Yeah. So good. That okay. Let's let's work on well. Let's work on that, and then we'll see what happens with the partisan fairness. So we're sixty-five. It needs a few, and we're sixty-two. It needs a few, and not a whole lot. And then 60, 61, We've got to shed four thousand thereabouts. Okay. So let's start the furthest west district. And I, I'd like to point out that 63 can hold some too if you decide to smooth it all the way across. But I suggest looking at the whole region because 71, yeah, you know, if you make this all perfect and then 71, you have to modify because it's high. So 71 could go to 63. So if you keep your changes yeah. over in here, you'll be good over there. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, 66 is just a spec high too. So, um, Let's let's move um, that the furthest the pink one sixty one the furthest one north and then let's add let me see sixty one is yeah let's add that to sixty two this township right here both of them that yeah that one there both of them are actually and the one right next to it uh, uh, that's four thousand people right there oh really. Okay. Yes, it's 3,924. Okay. okay, let's put it there. And let's, put that and in then, the 62. Yeah, and then the I'll, 60, I'll figure, figure out what to do. Yeah, 62 is going to be high. I was just going to point out 65 can still take some too. Yeah. So if you you could split it between them or however you want to do it. Well, let's, let's go up north of the next one up north. Um, just above the one we, we selected. Okay, so I don't want to add to 62. I want to take... Okay. Commissioner Weiss has a thought, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Clark. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner yeah, Weiss. Go right up. You see the whole there? It's, is that white or is is that unassigned? Or what's what's up with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's... Uh, it sure is. That may be by 65 is down. So shall I assign this area to 65? Uh, yeah, I, I believe I believe that's where it was. I don't think it was in 67. Well, we'll assign it and then, but this was an area we were working on when the application went down. So this may be a result of it. Yeah. Mr. Orton, can you help? 
for sure that was in 65. Yeah. And, and now 65 should be, have a better number. Well, yeah, it's yeah. a bigger number. Yeah, well, we just moved something into it. Yeah. So we may have to cascade to the west. Well, we well, actually, we, we, we didn't, we, we didn't move ahead. anything into it. We've assigned that properly. Oh, yeah, we did it from 61. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 61 is where at the moment. I think that's in scope. Can you bring the active matrix down a little so I can see 61? So 61 yeah. is um, 44. I, quote ideal. 62 is high and 66 is now high. So okay. really you transfer the high number from 61 to 62. That's all I just did. Yeah. Really. Well, let, well, let's look at what I just changed. It was and just let's it, yeah, let's take everything that's outside that city and move it. Uh, move it back. Okay, I'm going to incrementally do it as blocks. So I'm going to select Correct. this area and, and just start at that level. Yeah, I don't Mr. think we'll get a ton of people, but we'll get get it reduced some. Commissioner Clark, I'm going to try to get Commissioner Orton in here. Okay. Doug, before you do that, I think you could leave that there because the district to the west, I believe. I can't tell the number. Well, I don't, is that it the one below more. Lansing? 63. Well, 63 needs more. 63 okay, so we can take more. we can take from 62 and move into 63. Yeah, and, and what I pointed out earlier, you know, just point. checked all the districts around like 63 because 63 is restricted. This is the, all it can do. And 71 is 2,600 under. Why is 63 restricted? So just we got to look at the whole region or we're kind of back ourselves in a hole. If we go to 63? No, I'm, I'm just pointing out that yeah. 71 is low. I don't know about the other. 70, 71 is high. 72 is low. You're going to end up going all the way across. Okay, so what, what's 62 at? 3, 000, is, is it 3,000? Over 3,000. Yes, sir. So let's, okay, let's, let's instead of that, <coughs> Let's move the two bottom southwest precincts from 62 to 63. Yeah. See what this area right in here? Correct. <coughs> Excuse me. See what that does for us. So that whole township is 1100. Should I move the whole township and yeah, yeah, go ahead and move 63. It, yeah. Okay, and then the, I'll wait till you move. Okay, good. So 63 and hold on. I'm, I'm missing something. 63 is 20, 62 of 63. Okay. So um, now let's go back to 62 and the, the, the township that's right next to it. Yeah, down on the bottom, there's a town down there. Can't read the name of it. It's too small for me. Let's, let's just select the town. No, 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 down, down, right next to where we just made the change. Yeah, yeah, there's a town down there, yeah. Let's just take that. And I think there's a small piece right under it too you're gonna to have to take. That was Sylvania, Doug. What is it? Sylvania. Okay. And what, yeah. And the, and the piece below it. There's a small piece, yeah. Now,
So that brings 62 in scope. And it drove 63 up. So let's look at where we can move some from 63. Let's go back to where we were. Take that city off, and yeah, but yeah, back that last last piece off. And let's let's look at the township and see what we can do, and not not move as much from sixty two to sixty three. Okay, so then yeah, let's go. Let's take how many people on. Uh, we can't. I don't. How many people in Marenzi Township or precinct or whatever it is? Precinct. So it's. 2270 in that precinct? And the town of Morency is 2270. Not, oh, not the town of Morency, the rest of that. This, this, th this, okay. I took that out in 62. Okay, 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 you, it's, okay, it's out. Let's scroll up and there's a city called Hudson, I believe. Let's, let's just take Hudson and see what happens. I move that from 62 to 63. So Hudson has 2,400 people. That has more people than Marinci. Yeah, that's the same problem then. Yeah. Okay, what's further north? Let's see what we got. I think we're going to have to get down to a smaller level to do this because I don't want to keep going too far west. Matt, you know, one of the options is this area you moved into 61 was a fairly large number is to move less into 61. So you have less to chase around over here. Oh, and then, then that'll reduce what's in 60. Let's see, 62 is over now. Why do I want to move some back? I'm just saying when you move this area, you made 61 ideal, but you transfer the entire deviation into 62 okay. rather than just part of it. Part, That's okay. One, okay. One way I, was, of I, at it. I was looking at the pink portion. So, okay, one, let, let's open that up. Let that, yeah, you know, let get expand that. So, the, Can you tell how many people? Oh, well, no, I don't want to touch the city. Right. Can we take the, the township, but not the city? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can do it at the block level, just kind of go around it. Correct. Like, oh, okay. Like Give it take a try. This, whole, this whole upper part, maybe, and, and then however you want to approach it. Yeah, the upper part. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Let's, let's start with that, and then we'll, if we can add, yeah, from there up. Oh, actually, there's a major road in there. West Wellsville Road or something. It appears to be, yes. Yeah, let's, let's go from there up. Deerfield Road, Brennett Drain. Okay, let's go from there up and see what happens. I think we're headed in the right direction here. So that area is just 136 people back into 61. Yeah, put it in 61 and then let's go down further and see what else we can move. So oh, we yeah. could continue with the same idea, but yeah, that, yeah just that's no, there's just that section you had. Yeah, the, those two rows of precincts. And let's see what we got. We may be good at this, at, at this number.
Just a moment, Commissioner. Sure. Trying to let things catch up here. Yeah. And then after, if this looks good, then we're going to, first thing we're going to do is save it. We're not locked up, are we, Kent? It's still um, actively processing, but I'm, I'm not real optimistic at this point. Oh, it looks like it's back. It's back? Looks okay, like good. it. Okay, nope. good. No, it's no. not. So I'm hesitant to ask commissioners, but it is 12 and we've had a tough morning. How are you feeling? Do you want to work through until one? That's what that's on the plan. And I'm seeing some nodding heads. We want to work through to one. Is yeah, that true? I, I'm nodding my head too. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I'm nodding okay. it. Yes. <laughs> Keep on trucking. We're just going to wait for yeah. the computer and thank you for all our, your patience. What's the best approach, Kent? Is it to close it or? Yeah, I'm getting ready to do it, to close it, because it. I yeah. think generally when it goes this long, it ends up yeah. shutting yeah. down and crashing anyway. Well, well, we'll still have our changes though, won't we? We'll be able to back up to a certain point in time. We might have okay. to put the last change back in, but. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, it was kind of eating up the CPU there.
Okay. Yeah, so let's go back down to 61 and 62. Uh, so we're back to here. Let me um, back up in time one, sure. one step. And we'll come back and look at District 36 to make sure it's. Yeah. Sixty six is good. Thirty six is back to normal. And uh, what district were we working on again? I'm sorry. Sixty one and sixty two down on the bottom of the yes. state at the border. Yeah, so, the higher border. This okay. is, I think, where we were. Correct. Um, I think our, we we're reassigning, putting some of this territory back into sixty one. Is that not correct? We were the top part of that. The precinct you're in. Yep. So we we had done from the road up and then we were working, we were gonna work down past that road because it wasn't enough. Yep. So we get grab that, let's, okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, assign that, let's, let's see where the numbers go. We may assign a little bit more, 61 and 62. So you got, you know, you're getting it nibbled away to be less. Um, you want to just yeah, right get across that. this area and see what happens? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because most of the population in this township is down in that city. Did you assign it? Yes, sir. And and now it's 300 high, but you got a little better, more manageable number in 62 to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Can we. 62 can we take, is now low. Is this. A, can we take this precinct? 62 is low. OK, so let's let's go take some off from what we just did. So. Yes, and 63, well, 63, yeah, so we yeah, can keep. Go back to the change we just made. I want, let's take a little off of that. So let me, let me get my bearings here where I'm at. So. This is Commissioner Orton. Um, Commissioner Clark. Yes, I think if he zooms out a little bit, I thought there was one that showed it's up about the same amount that 62 is down. Have you looked at that, what that switch would be? Excuse me, Commissioner, are you talking about a district or area? I'm talking about 62 and 65, I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, 65. We're, 65 is not, oh, I see what 65 is. Right. So 65 just, is high. It is high. I'm going to turn on the precincts. Okay. So it's it, it, the townships, it's an entire township. I'm just going to select this township to get a um, number Correct. for that entire township is 1,500 people. This entire township is 1,500. That's going to put us more in line. Let's do that. Good, good okay. suggestion, Cynthia. 62. Okay, now let's see where we're at. So 65 is 0.12% is high, 62 is 0.43% high, and 61, 61 is 0.34. Do me a favor and save it. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that, uh, MC. Go on to the next person. MC isn't at his mic right now, so we'll go on to the next person, which is Juanita. 
Juanita, do you need a reminder of the the districts that we that have the most deviation to look at? Yes, that would help. You know, so why don't we bring this spreadsheet up and, and color code the ones that we've done already so we know what's left? Yeah. So 61 we did. We just said to make it a different color. and Yeah. And I forget which number Dustin worked on. 55. 55, yeah. Now, that way we got a good visual of what we did and what we can't touch at this point. And by the way, did I miss lunch? No, ma'am. No. We are going to work. We're going to work to one, but yes, that is why I was away from my desk. <laughs> I okay. needed a little break. <laughs> but if you'd like, if you'd like to cook something and deliver it, I, I'd appreciate that. One of you. I may do that soon. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. I'm going on mute. Okay, um, this area, 65, is it open? That's a great question. Um, 60, we, I think we just did 65. Okay. 61, 65. So 76, I believe, is open. Okay, can and I see it? it? I'm zooming to 76. Se 76 is the northwest corner of Grand Rapids. Okay. And it's under. And yes, ma'am. And okay. um, 75 is a little uh, is under as well. Oh, my gosh. 79 and 78 are on the other side of the river. I think that was the idea of drawing it like that. I take that okay. back. It, 76 does cross the river into 78. But 78 is, you know, has a fairly high non-Hispanic white. But anyway. And, and I think, uh, Commissioner Curry, what I think you can do here pretty well, what we did was we tried to um, draw Grand Rapids um, uh, with a sort of a dividing line. Um, and at this point, meaning that I think we we're using the river and there was a street, I believe it was Fulton Street, that was sort of a, a, a you know, suggested by the community of interest to use as a Northwest divider within the city. And at this point, um, because we're trying to adjust for population, our number one criteria, I think it's very legitimate to just sort of equalize between 76 and 78. Okay. Even, even 79, if you'd like. All right. Thanks, MC. Okay. Well, that's kind of, um, okay. 78. Okay, let's go to 79 so we can see if we can put some in 78. 79 is also 2200 high, 78 is 2900 high, while 76 is 3300 low. Okay, let's go to, let's, let's see if we can deviate some to 76. Okay, this is the area where 76 crosses across the river into Grand Rapids, um, as MC was saying, this is Wealthy Street, Fulton Street. Okay, well, oh, it doesn't wealthy say Wealthy. Yes. Yeah, oh, wealthy. interesting. So we may not have even used the right line <laughs> when we did it originally. Yes, um, wealthy street. Commissioner Clark, I see your hand. Yeah. Before once we decide what we're gonna what we're going to focus on maybe we should look at the political fairness numbers yeah that would be a good idea that would be a good idea even though that's yes. not our objective we don't want to destroy it if it's if it's in line yeah. so 75 is 54.34 democrat 76 is almost 58% 78 is 72% I, I'd be surprised if these numbers damn it or significantly lower 78. I think you're safe to uh, adjust Commissioner Curry between 76 and 78. Okay, well, let's do that. 
Um, Commissioner Lett is suggesting to get rid of the tooth. Yeah, doesn't it look bad? It really looks bad. <laughs> I'm going to be the dentist today. Let's see. Um, okay, Miss Miss uh, Steve, how would you get rid of his tooth? Which way will you pull it out? Commissioner Lett, Commissioner Curry was asking for your assistance. Um, what can I? What can I help you with? <laughs> How to get rid of the tooth? Just take the what's uh, seventy eight is low, seventy six yeah. is oh, seventy eight high. So yeah. we need to go along. Is high. Yeah, take take uh, the top blocks from from the tooth. In other words, take the tooth go yeah. all the way across and put them in seventy six. Okay, I'm going to okay. select them, and then if y'all can say. If this is the idea you had in mind, yes, all the way down whatever road that is, yes, yeah, but we want the tooth out now, don't we? It will be okay. Don't hang with me. Okay. So, are you uh, telling me to assign this highlighted area into 76? Yes. Um, that made a big, uh, took at least half took of a it. Lot out. Yeah, it did. Uh, so we need to put some of 76 and 75. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, at this point, 76 is still 1,000 low and oh, 78 is 600 high. Yeah. I'm going to make that bigger so it's more easily seen. So... We we'll do, do that same process from right there. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to select it. And then. That's 900. Back up a little. Back it up a little. Okay. That's 780. Mm -hmm. That's 700. Mm-hmm. Let's assign it. At this point, 78 is 0.1%. 76 is 0.41% low. Mm -hmm. 75 is 0.64%. 79. It's still high though, isn't it? For the area, it's, it's a little bit higher. But okay. um, yeah, you could... Yeah. 80, 86 is still high. So you could still pass. I, I don't know what other ramifications in this area, if it was Asian or Hispanics or what it was in 78. I vaguely remember 78 coming into play somewhere. That, that, is, that is accurate. Um, 79 does not represent the uh, minority district. Um, it was a coalition district in, I thought it was 86, but 86 and 96 look like, it's hard to see the, the definition between the two, but I'm pretty sure it was 86 and not 79. Yeah, I see here 86 is 51, 78 is, you know, immensely a Democrat. Yeah. But 80, wherever that's at, 86 is way over here. I don't even know where it's at. Well, 86 is right below uh, 70. Yeah, 86 is a, looked like a, um, Parson fairness adjusted district. That's correct, a coalition district. Commissioner Curry, does that help? That... We hope. Let's see. Um, yeah. And and I just want to acknowledge. Thank you for getting seventy six adjusted. So that is that was the primary purpose here. You're welcome to okay. continue. Okay. Um, who's helping me on that, Stephen Doug? Um, Steve, Steve and Richard have their heads together. They're working. Oh, on, they're Steve trying and to help Richard. You. Okay. Hi, yeah. hi, Richard. Um, <laughs> He's waving at you, but I don't know if the it, camera's on him. <laughs> Wave again, Richard. There you go. <laughs> okay. So uh, we're looking at um, 
what is that, 76? Yes, ma'am, this is 76 it's in low. here. It's low. We need to put some in well, it, right? Commissioner Curry, you, you, did, you did that one already. And that oh, was the okay. one that... Yep, and I think what's happening now is you're, um, as you're, as you were here, right? It's it's seventy seven, and maybe even seventy nine is the next focus. Seventy nine is the focus right now. Right, um, right. Yeah. Okay, where's seventy nine? I see it. Okay, boys, what you think? Let's move. Uh, what's it? Let's move seventy. Some of seventy nine. Where? Let's see. Over to seventy. Ninety six. Where's 96? over to ninety five at ninety six. Okay, let's try that. Excuse me, what was that? Where are we going? They were mumbling something. I think 95, 96. Who said that? Rich. Guys, do you have any help for Commissioner Curry? Well, 95 is low and uh, 96 is low. 77. So right here, 79 and 96 right here. So we got 79 high. 96 low, but 77, you really, you need to do all these districts mesh together. Mm -hmm. If you make one or two perfect, then you mm -hmm. go on the next one and you're hung up. So just kind of look at it collectively. Commissioner Ede wants to try to get in here too with a thought. Okay, that helped. Didn't we draw 79 that way for a purpose? No, I think it was drawn because of, so 86 was drawn for a purpose and 79 was adjusted because of that purpose. Is it? So it's, I think I would say it's a little different. 79 was not drawn sort of intentionally, right? It was just adjusted because of 86 intentional draw. Does that make sense? And where's, where's 87 on here? Cause I'm looking at 87 and it's 87 is on the West coast there. That, that... Oh, never mind. Okay. Okay. Back to you, um, Commissioner Curry, and I think you had requested that um, Doug and Steve sort of continue yeah. helping you. Is that accurate? Yeah, because we need to, um, we need to what? Take some of the uh, 80, what is that, 86 or 96? 86 is still high. Mm -hmm. I think they're doing some, some numbers and trying to work some math out. I'm not sure. Okay, you guys, come on. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna point out that the just, point out the, the focus minority races for 86. It's 51.59, 4841. That's 86. And that's by design, I understand, I think. So that district is also overpopulated. Mm -hmm. Now, the two things going to happen when you move, or if, if you choose to move a precinct out of there, if you move a precinct out to lower the total numbers, you can Im improve raise or lower those election results. So it could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing, but depending on your goal. Well, wouldn't we want it to be a good thing? We do want it to be a good thing. You well said, Commissioner Curry. Okay, so. Um, we got 77 minutes over a thousand. We take that move. I think just so you know, there's there's a lot of sort of, um, sort of math, and, math and I think pencils and erasers going yeah. on over here. So we're just trying okay. to okay. hold on a little bit. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Move it down to 95. Yeah. They're going to come up with a good suggestion, I'm sure. And then 96 is 2,000 under. So we're Can I jump in here, MC? Please do, Commissioner. Uh, is that you, Commissioner Clark? I don't see you on the screen, but I just, yeah, yeah, it is. It's your voice. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry I didn't hear. I'll get my picture up. Okay. Um, oh, it's okay. Uh, 70, 79 has too many people. Six, 96 has too less people. Right. Well, I would take the bottom southeastern part of 79 and move, start moving pieces. Okay. And you also Over have 86. From, from 79 to 96. Okay. We also got to remove some people out of... Uh, 86, right? Well, that, yeah, but that's good because the western side of 86 bumps up against 96 as well. So okay. I take a little bit from 79 and take a little bit from 86. That sounds great. Uh, that's and, good then, uh, and then we can keep adjusting as we move forward. Just, okay. just little that, pieces. That seems reasonable. Um, well, thank you. Let's try that. Who is that uh, that's moving our, our maps for us this day? This, this is Kent. Can't hide. Commissioner Curry. Okay, what okay, are we moving here? We're moving 
Say it again, John, uh, Doug. The, the bottom southeast corner of 79 into 96. So let's see what the impact is there. Ninety-six to okay. Yeah, let's okay. see what the impact is. Yeah, that cut it in half on seventy-nine. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, that looked good. Okay, and so then you, and then you said eighty-six. Well, if you need to reduce eighty-six, I would take the bottom southeast corner of eighty-six and move that to ninety-six and see what the numbers bring us. Okay, let's move it around uh, so we can see. Yeah, now it now it increased too much. Oh no! Yeah, I'm ninety six, so I take that back. Take I mean, it there's back. smaller. Yeah, I'd reverse that, and then there's smaller to the north of that. There's some smaller precincts that you may want to move. Okay, Mr. Kurt, you see Mr. Segal has his hand up. Do you want to call on him? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to briefly point out these dots are are African American populations over ten percent. Okay. 86 was built by design like that. Okay. By moving that precinct into 96, we raised the Democratic performance in 86 mm -hmm. and got the population, though it's Lord. slightly under, it's better than it had been. Yeah. And that's a good thing, right? That is a good thing, Commissioner Curry. Well done. Okay. But, okay. but we are, but we overpopulated 96 now by 4,000. So now we got to work with 96. Okay. Well, it, yeah, I don't know if you want to work with that or how we want to work with that here. Well, you can put 96 into 95. Okay. Let's try that. And yeah, then good, Mr. Adelson. Good suggestion, Steve. Mr. Adelson has a comment too. Yeah, I just, excuse me, in the, uh, following up on what Ken had said, yes, that, that this did um, reduce the population in 86. It really didn't change the electoral math, but the moving into 96, which is now almost 5% overpopulated. So we're back over 9% total deviation. So I think in just, I know we're going kind of around this area. Mm -hmm. So that population will also need to move into, for, you know, for example, like 97 is almost at, has zero population. So that right. may be a repository. There may be uh, places that like 95 is more than 2000 underpopulated. So I, I would suggest um, looking at, at those as well. Okay. Thanks, Bruce. Um, You're welcome, Commissioner Gurd. Okay. Um, okay, you guys, come on, Steve. Well, we uh, need to take 2,000 out of 96 and put it in 95. Okay. Also, I can point out 79 is still low. Hadn't that precinct could, had been in 79 earlier? Yeah, we can put another 1,000 back into 79 if we took it out of there. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Commissioner Curry, would you like Commissioner Lett to direct? Is that what you're asking, or would you like he to can, have him direct? I, I'm, I'm, yes, he can. And can't you? You, if Let's they see. do something positive, you can follow them. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Commissioner Curry. Uh, yeah, I said we said yeah. that. <laughs> Just try to get two thousand into ninety-five and a thousand into seventy-nine. Okay, let's look at this precinct right here. That precinct alone is 3,300, so that's large. Yeah. We um, can split that between those two. Yeah. And, yeah, and 77's got a little meat on his bones, too, so maybe you take 77 into 79. I don't know. Okay. 77, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 1430. That's, a 30, that's, that's also a 3,600 person precinct. These are large precincts. Okay. Kind of direct them, Steve, because my, uh, I'm not yep. getting a good pull on my head. Okay. We're working on it. All right. So if we take 77 and put it in the sum of 77 into 79 and then work on 
96 and 95 and 97. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're going to work around pretty good. In May. If it doesn't, we could just take a bet. Looks like Wayland is about 4,400. Is that right, Kent? Is that what you were highlighting there? Wayland is 4,400? Yes, sir. That's what it appears to be, 4,435. Okay. Thank you. That, and I think Commissioner Orton was trying to suggest that that might be a nice fit between 96 and 95. Mm -hmm. Is that, did I hear that correctly, Commissioner Orton? I know, I just, I think I was reading your mind. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, it might work. I'm not from that area, so I don't know which district it would fit better in, Steve, maybe, or MC. Commissioner Lett, it's back to you. Mm -hmm. Well, we were at uh, putting some of 77 into 79. Mm -hmm. And we were you, you said that was large. Both of the, these two precincts are 3,300, roughly. Combined so we, or each one? Each precinct is 3,300. I'll look at it quickly again. So that little dude right there is 3,600. That one there is 3,300. So, Ken, do we need to put some of 96 into 95? Would that kind of equal stuff out? Or 95 into 96? No, 96 into 95. Is there a little low? Way Whale, Whalen is 4,400, and that would get 96 evened out and make 95, 2,300 over. Um, and we'd have to move 95. So, you know, then you get into 77 to 79, and then 95 to 77. I mean, you're, you're moving in a circle. It, it just, where, where do you want to go from? You can move this into here and then just make one move down to here. What makes sense, Steve, Doug? You guys were helping, and Richard. What makes sense? But I think moving 77 into 79, and then we'll move 77 down into 95. Let's try that. Yeah, I agree with Steve. We got to do something. We're just sitting here spinning our wheels. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you want to approach this? Move that precinct up into 79. This precinct? Yeah. Too, too many people. Why don't we move the, hot, the top part of the precinct? The we're going to gonna move some. We're going to move some out of 77. Seven. 70, 79 is 20, roughly 2,500 high. And okay. 77, is 77 is roughly 2,500 low. So we need to right. equalize between those two. Yeah. Um, you, you get closer if you move this precinct right into there okay i don't know if that's the right thing to do but well let's try it well, we can at least see how it so looks most, yeah. most 79 I, actually that's the way it was wasn't it yeah so we're just chasing our tail well 77 is a thousand high 79 is a thousand low so Comm commissioner um let if you um if you take Whalen, huh? take the take Wayland, that that city that's in yeah. Yep, and add it to 95. I think that's what Commissioner Orton was trying to point to. Is that is that correct, Commissioner Orton? That would at least take care of 96. And then okay. you can go over. Okay, put Whalen into 95. Mm hmm But we're back to 8.44 deviation, which is good overall. Mm -hmm. So now 96 is ideal. 95 is a little plump. And you know, 77, a Commissioner, 79 is a little low. Commissioner E, did you want to try to? Yeah, what does 88 look like as far as population? 88 is 114. Okay, so that's a place we could go to. Yes. Mm -hmm. I also think that if we zoom out a little bit, so let's zoom out, let's look at 88 and 95. Okay, mm -hmm. so because we made the Lakeshore District, 88 became kind of weird. 
I would suggest that we move the rest of that area that's more northwestern into 95 and move 88 a little bit more northern into those bottom townships so that it, it squares it off. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it looks. So I'm just going to select the, you're talking about moving this area into 95? Yes. No. Oh. No, the that, way. The 95 is off. over. It's well, over, yeah, yeah, but then you would. So I'm going to go over here. Okay. I think what he was saying, if we move some of this in the 95 and then let 88 come up into here. Hold on, let me give you the mic. I was saying move this area here into 95 and then 88, take this part. And then instead of having a district that goes from down here, thank you. So you see right now, because we made this Lakeshore District, we have 88 that kind of winds all the way up the coast. I think it would be better if we instead moved 95 this way and moved 88 up into here. And that way you have two more compact districts. And then we can look at the population deviation between the two because 88 is at pretty much zero and 95 is high. Commissioner Orton's right behind us. You might want to... But we were making little tweaks here for population. If we're going to do something major like that, we should relook at communities of interest and things because we're changing drastically. And I'm a little, I'm still a little bit nervous about the Lakeshore community. Honestly, after hearing Mr. Adelson, I'm not sure that it's, um, even though it's a community of interest, um, it's, it's so thin. And yeah, I'm, so I'm a little nervous about making those major changes. Um, yeah. Well, we do have to make changes somewhere, so let's see what we can do. Um, Commissioner just, Curry, it's to you. Go ahead, Mr. Segal. I just highlighted the area uh, Commissioner Eads was speaking of. That's 21,534. And ju just apples to apples, we can now um, clear that. And then, let's say we select this. I don't know if that's his intention. Um, and that's 23,000. So, yeah, you know, I mean, just to give a picture of what is possible numbers wise. How would you like to proceed, Commissioner Curry? I'm trying to get the picture. Um, I'm let me let me ask Bruce, what was your concern? What is your concern if we do that? Of moving population from 95 to 88? Move. Uh, 88, take the top four, move them into 95, and then square off 88 across the bottom. Well, 95 is overpopulated. So uh -huh. if you move population into 95, the population will have to go someplace. Well, we're going to move it out okay. into 88. In other words, mm -hmm. they're swapping. Yeah. Make it look, basically, make it look 88 look a little better. Well, yeah. If, Let's give then it we a try. still got to deal with the population yeah. excess of 95. Absolutely. Let's give it a try and see. Yeah. What <coughs> so move those four precincts, nor the northern four precincts of 88 into 95. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree with you. You including this uh, smaller town here? How much is it? Um, I'll just add to it, and 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 then back out so you can see the big picture. So this area is nineteen thousand and something. I highlighted earlier, and it's twenty one. I don't know if I maybe included this one, but anyway, mm -hmm. that's nineteen thousand four seventy four. That would go into ninety five is the idea, I think. Mm -hmm. And then you would take some of this. And put it somewhere um, else, yeah. And take something down here and put it into 88. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many you think, in Anthony, and the bottom four into 88? 
Yeah, I'm just I was just trying to make it look a little better. Yeah, like those bottom four or maybe across uh, you know, those four and more to the right. It just it depends whatever you want to swap out. But now 88 looks pretty, pretty wonky. And I think that change would make it look quite a bit better. It, take the four, those four Kent and put them in 95. Okay. And then highlight, highlight the, this yeah, area. Do the, those four, and let's see what they look like. That's 11,000. Do the next two. This way or this way? Well, wait a minute. So, yeah. So 95 is now 21,000. 21, and how and, much is that? And 80. This, this area here is at 11, so okay, we need- do the next two. Up this, north up. also. I'm just gonna add on to it. I'm not assigning right. anything until- Commissioner Orton. Okay, and that's 22. And that's 23, so. 23. And then 88 is very low. It's Commissioner Orton. So I realize we're doing this for population, but we don't have to be doing this much. We can, we were in the phase of making little tiny tweaks. So now if we do this, we're splitting Allegan away from the other two small towns there. And I'm sure that that's community of interest. That's all in Allegan County. And those small towns are closely related. All right. So we're changing we're, the communities of interest. We take all those off. Okay. Go back to the original. See, that's the whole point. You have to keep playing with this until we get it. It's rather... Uh... I agree, Juanita, but we just need, I think we were 2,000 no. off. We don't have to be changing 20,000 people. Right, that's a big fight, yeah. That's true. That might have been a little too much. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that was a bit extreme, uh, moving a county like that. Yeah. That, that's another, that little block that you just undid, that, that was another community of interest that should have been uh, with set, whatever that upper one is, 82, that little precinct. Well, yeah, well, never mind. Keep going. Commissioners, is this where we were? Um, is that, that looks like 88 as it was. And we're back to our 8.4 plan deviation. So that, that seems right. It looks right. And 95 is 2,300 yeah. high. Yeah. 88 it's, could take some of them. Uh, 93 could take a little bit in a pinch. 96 has opportunity. So. Oh, we could take some of those two precincts on the bottom. Are we going to upset? And I'm not saying this facetiously. The community of interest if we take Goebbels into 88? That would be a good move. That's 6,775 people. Um, might all be that. A high. <laughs> How much is uh, Bloomingdale? So that, including Goebbels and Bloomingdale, is 3,700. How much? Take, yeah. Just Bloomingdale by itself is 2,900. So Goebbels is not very large. And that, well, it, well, all that does is transfer your debt to 88. Because you mm -hmm. move, this would go over by 2,800. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Where'd they get all those people over there? Was ninety 
97. He's still got a lower 95. How much is uh, that northeast precinct in 95? Thinking of putting that over into 97. Commissioner Rodney. And 79 as well needs some. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one away. You'd have to step it up, but it would work. Where? What? Say it one more time, Commissioner Orton. 79. District 79 is underpopulated. You know, if you transfer something, I don't know, you know, a smaller Maybe. number. 77, is that near there? Yes, it's adjacent. Mm hmm It was 90, 95, Kent. That precinct in the northeast corner, how much is that? The precinct where my cursor is? Yes. That is 3,300. These are all 33 to 36, 37. Fairly populated precincts. For this area, how um, uh, 97, 90, 97. <coughs> I vote to take lunch hour and let us think about it. Should we come back, commissioners? It's it's been a challenging one, Commissioner Ede. <coughs> <coughs> Well, you know, I got to be honest, I think this is a, a pretty poor use of our collaborative time together. I mean, we're making these extremely small changes when there are still big changes that need to be made. And then we'll have to go back again and do the small changes over again once the bigger changes are done. So I, I don't really get why we're spending, you know, all this time this morning, you know, getting the deviation so much more minutely close to zero in these other areas when, <clears throat> when I, I don't really know if we have to be doing that because the main reason they're like this are the VRA districts and we made those that way perfectly. I mean, purposely. And we may have to go back. I think what we're recognizing is that it, it is the first priority, first criteria. And like you said, we because of the changes that we are making and we're trying to get the highest ones, and we're not adjusting it very much, um, which may mean that we have to actually go back to our VRA districts, which is a huge sort of OO kind of thing, right? Commissioner Witches. Um, Commissioner Reed, where would you suggest that we make big changes at? Because I'm, I'm, I'm just lost at that. Me too. Me. Where, where would you suggest we, we should be spending our time then if, if this is not what we're it's supposed not here. to or should be doing right now? Well, I mean, I think there are big changes that, that need to be made uh, on this map. I think there are changes that need to be looked at on the Senate map. Yesterday, I talked what about. The, so, what are the numbers? Um, Go I'll, ahead, Commissioner I'll get, Curry. I'll get to that, can, but I'd like to, to finish. Um, Go ahead, Commissioner Eden. I, and I think, you know, yesterday I talked about having a different option for Detroit on the collaborative congressional map. Mm -hmm. And I see those as being bigger changes than what we're doing now. For, for this map specifically, I think we need to look at Ann Arbor. We need to look at Lansing. We need to look at, uh, we've talked about perhaps looking at the UP a few times now, but haven't actually looked at it. Um, so I'd recommend when we get back from lunch, we look at some of those bigger changes and then maybe later coming back and trying to go through and do this process. Commissioner Orton. So bigger changes, you're talking about partisan fairness changes, not population changes. Well, I mean, yeah, but they go hand in hand. If we make those changes, we're going to have to come back and redo what we've spent all morning doing. And, and I think many of us understand what you're trying to say. And we're trying to be systematic because we do have to somehow substantiate everything we're doing. So our, we've gotten legal counsel and our experts are helping us say, hey, take number one into consideration. Um, 
So we've been doing that. Um, I don't know, is there any general counsel or is there any other comments? It, I, it was suggested that we take a break, just come back to it after lunch. I'm seeing, a, yeah, let's just. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, no, I have no comment. Thank the you. The commission can uh, direct where it goes, but I, I, I do believe some of those changes were already raised uh, in the past and, and discussed. Okay. So we are at number one. We're still trying to adjust our population deviation. Um, Commissioner Curry, thank you. And uh, with all the help from Commissioner Lett and others, um, we're still on your turn. Um, when we return from lunch, it is 12, what time is it? 12.51. Without objection, we will recess until uh, 1.50. Um, have a good lunch. Okay. Uh, MC. MC. <clears throat> Call her. MC, I have a <clears throat> lock that's broke that I want to check on a door. I'm, that's some, I'm going to take my lunch, getting something real fast to eat, and check on this door that I have to go see about on 8 Mile. If I'm a little late coming back, yes. Oh, muted. Okay. Okay, well, I didn't mind if they heard me.
Uh uh, no, I am. Um, I'm at my computer, waiting on them. Of course, I'm looking at stuff while I wait. You know, look at out. Oh, there they go. Oh wait. Oh no. What was it then? Looking at some more pictures for the toy. Oh, oh, I'm not yes. on mute. Good afternoon, commissioners. Welcome back. It is 2.01. I am, as vice chair of the commission, I'm returning us to order, maybe. And um, we'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. 
Hello, commissioners. Please stay present when I call your name. If you're attending today's meeting remotely, please disclose during roll call that you are attending remotely, as well as your physical location. I'll start with Doug Clark. Present, and I'm attending uh, this, uh, this afternoon meeting uh, remotely from Rochester Hills. Juanita Curry. Anthony Ede. Brittany Kellum. Present and attending remotely from Wayne County, Michigan. Rhonda Lang. Present and attending remotely from Reed City. Steve Lett. Present. Cynthia Orton. Present. MC Rothhorn. Present. Rebecca Zatella. Janice Follett. Present. Aaron Wagner. Present attending remotely from Charlotte, Michigan. Richard Weiss. Present. Dustin Witches. Present. 11 commissioners are present and there is a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. Uh, uh, Commissioner Witches. Yeah, I just have a, a point of personal privilege here. I, uh, I don't think I chose my words too carefully earlier today when I said I didn't care about township boundaries or any boundaries and uh, specifically kind of wanted to clear that one up. What I meant to say was at the given time, it wasn't my highest priority. And we were dealing with uh, uh, the first section, which would be Voters' Rights Act and, and equal population measures, which to me is more important than township boundaries. So I just wanted to clear that up. I do care about townships and their community lines and everything that that they, that is in their little uh, area, but just wanted to clear that up for everybody. Thank you, Commissioner Witches. At this point, we're gonna return back to our unfinished business. Um, and continue um, our mapping and uh, the collaborative state house um, with co for compliance and adjustments. I will, I believe we were with Commissioner Curry as she is not with us at the moment. So we will move on to Commissioner Ede. Um, Commissioner Ede, you have the floor and um, you are welcome to keep us in the house or move where you wish. And if you choose to set, if you do decide to move, uh, what I would offer is I'd like to, yeah, try to speak to why and so forth. So help us know where you want to go. Yeah, well, um, sure. I think we've, I think, as I said before the meeting, you know, we're not making, you know, big changes here when we have other areas where we can make bigger changes and provide more options to the public. So while I think that, you know, we can make this map a little better, uh, I'd like to move back to the collaborative um, congressional map and um, make some changes there. We, we can make a clone and have a, a right now we have two collaborative options. I'd like to make a third collaborative option that has a choice for Metro Detroit. Um, so let's pull up the base collaborative map and that is map number Yeah, it was updated since then. So 100521V1CD. Okay. It's map number 200 on the okay. portal. I need to download it. I don't have that map, it looks like, because I wasn't here that day. So give me okay. just a minute. And thank you, Commissioner Ede. Um, I want to acknowledge that um, it, we are moving on. Um, we, I think we, I just want to speak to the idea that we're not done with the house. We're just putting it back on the shelf and um, the other congressional districts and the Senate districts that we've drawn are on the shelf. Um, and they, we do need to keep moving. I think what Commissioner Ede is helping with is, is we're trying to just feel like we can make some movement. I think it was a really tough morning for us. So we're just gonna try to put it back. Yeah, put it on the shelf for now. We're return, yeah, return to something else. And um, thanks for moving us in that direction, Commissioner Ede. Yeah, what, what I really want to do is give Metro Detroit uh, and Oakland County another choice. Like I said, we have two collaborative maps that uh, have two options for the west side of the state, but Metro Detroit is the same for each of them. Um, and I know some of my fellow commissioners have uh, changes too, so I'd like to get their input as, as well while doing this. And, you know, we can see if it makes the numbers go up or down and go from there while still being <laughs> compliant. Okay, 200 was the base 
collaborative. 200. Research. Okay. Yes. I'm going to download that in just a minute. Two oh one was the collaborative version that had uh, Commissioner Witch's changes with um, the west side of the state. What's nice also about the congressional map is since there's only 13 districts, we can probably have quite a few collaborative options, you know, since it's not 110 districts like we were just trying to work on. So this plan I just created, it's a, it's a copy of what is on the website, and I call it 10-0721-V1-CD. Uh, so it's a copy of the original. Commissioner Ede, you have the floor. So again, this is the, the what I think is the base collaborative map. We have, there's another collaborative map, the second one, titled 100521V1CDDW. I believe the DW is for dust and witches. And that's 201. That's the one that has um, the, like, the left Lakeshore District that extends all the way to Muskegon and combines Kalamazoo with Grand Rapids. Right. And that also had a, a better partisan fairness score, correct? That, that did. Um, this one had a worse partisan fairness score, which is why I'd like to give the Metro Detroit option to this one. And then if we want, we can look at combining those two options and seeing if that makes a difference. I'm not sure if it would or not. <clears throat> but for now, like I said, I want to focus on giving Metro Detroit, Oakland County, um, and Warren uh, another choice here. All right. Take so it away. Let's zoom into that area, Metro Detroit. Okay, so this is gonna, we need about 10 minutes to, to make these changes and keep the, um, the VRA districts in balance or about in balance. So first off, let's go to the township level. These are the- uh, you, can, you can take those off. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna wanna wanna put the names those. on it so I can better see what keep up. Okay, there's the names of the townships <clears throat> with their population. That's a little. Okay, so we're going to assign Southfield. Okay. We're, which we're, is right, right in the middle there. Okay. So Southfield, the top part of Southfield and Lathrop Village, we're going to assign that to District 2. Now, all of Southfield? All of Southfield, okay. yes. It's just three pieces. Okay. Uh, now let's go to District 3. So can, yeah, so let's select District 3. And now let's assign Troy into District 3. Troy is on the top right corner of the screen.
Let, yeah, so assign that. Mm -hmm. Okay, also assign Madison Heights to three. And Hazel Park to three, which is pretty much the rest of Oakland County in this area. Okay, now District 6, let's take that. We, so we, uh, we, added into we added population in District 2. We're gonna have to make up for it by changing the populations from one to two. So the part of Warren that's in District 1 to the right, the part that's sticking up above eight mile, let's assign that into District 6. Over this area? Yeah. We're assigning, so essentially what we're doing is we're assigning Warren back into Macomb County. So continue with this area? Yeah, that, all How? of that, that's above eight mile. Okay, where's, I don't know. Is so that yeah, eight that, mile right there? That eight miles, that um, the lower line, that's. Okay. Yeah, so all of that can go into District 6. Uh, we're going to split these precincts or no no all of it into district six <clears throat> just a moment do you see that dashed line the county line yes that's a mile oh okay well it's all of it then yep. okay i got it hmm Okay, now let's move to the bottom of District 2. Do you, uh, let's switch, so we're in voting precincts now, let's switch back to townships. And let's put Romul Romulus, Southgate, and Wyandotte into District 1. So yeah, it's that, then that part. Mm -hmm. This that, entire township? That entire township. Okay. Into the district one? Into district one, yes. And then to the right, both Southgate and Wyandotte. Oh, Southgate and Wyandotte, Wyandotte both yes, into district one. Okay, um, now north of Romulus, do you see Wayne? Yes. Let's assign that into district one. Okay, now let's see, can we zoom out, see where we're at? Okay, so now we need to adjust uh, for both population and for VRA to make the percentages closer to what we have to do um, according to our analysis, so. Commissioner Ede, I just want to acknowledge, I think um, what you're doing is, is helping us with, so we, I guess help us know, maybe walk us through some of the, the communities of interest that you're, right. you, you said you wanted to give a, a Detroit a different alternative. Do you yeah. have sort of in mind, like some of the communities that you're doing, or is oh, it yeah. just partisan There's fairness? A, no, 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 no. This, I didn't really even look at partisan fairness when doing this uh, until after it was um, already drawn and ran the numbers on. But no, South, in my opinion, Southfield is closely aligned with Detroit. Um, and also Troy is more closely aligned with the rest of Oakland County uh, than it is with, <clears throat> than with Macomb County. We've also, by adding Warren back into Macomb County, we've kept Warren with Macomb County. Um, so I, I think that it is a community of interest that's, and we've also added Romulus where the Detroit Metro Airport is located into a district back with Detroit and added a couple of downriver precincts uh, I'm sorry, Downriver Townships, which are the townships that are more closely aligned with Detroit than say Mon the Monroe Downriver, which we've also heard about like in the house map we already, we already looked at, but we've added the ones that are more closely associated to Detroit back with Detroit. Um, so I think it, it really 
helps Oakland County. I think it helps Wayne County. And I think it helps Macomb County to have a configuration that's similar to this. Thank you. Um, but that's just my opinion. You know, I, I want to give the public a choice so they can tell us what Absolutely. they like more. Absolutely. Thank you for helping me understand some of the changes. I, I appreciate yeah. it. The, the only negative, and I, there are negatives, right? There are pros and cons to any decision that we make, is that I think it does put some of the Yemeni and Bengali community that was in District 6, it takes them out of one and puts them into six. However, I think that community is acknowledged um, that it's a spread out community. And we still have Hamtramck and the surrounding areas of Hamtramck in District 1 here, which I, I think is a good compromise. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Continue. Are, are, are those all the changes? Um, well, this is the general gist of it. The other okay. changes are just for like VRA and making the population okay. So let's make the population okay first. So let's zoom up. Right. Um, we're going to go in between District 6 and 10 right now. Six and 10. Okay, we're gonna go a little, a little further. Okay, so you see Oakland. Yeah. Okay, put all of that in 10. So we're all that in we're, 10. Yeah, so we're not splitting Oakland Township anymore. Okay, and now let's take that to the left. Okay, so yeah, it has White Lake, it has Highland. Can we go south a little bit? Okay, repeat that. Sorry. So zoom out and uh, go, yep, right, perfect. So where are we? So the font's a little small, so it's a okay, little hard to uh, read. Let me enhance that so it's more legible. Wonderful. Okay. Seven is what I was looking at. So do you see where seven is on the border of Northville and Novi? So we're going to put Northville into seven. Northfield? Or? Yeah. Northville is part of three. Uh, Northville. Yeah, so we're looking taking at Northfield. Okay. Yeah. Northville. And I think this also supports a community of interest. We've heard a lot about Ann Arbor associating with the more highly educated parts of Oakland County. So we're going to go into a, specifically Novi. So we're going to go into just a little bit of Novi to get the correct population. Do we take the town? Yep, the take the town. Take uh, So now we're going to go um, into Novi, but let's go to the precinct level. OK. So let's switch to voter precincts because okay. we need to add a little bit more into seven. So we're going to take the one, five, nine, one, two, four, three, six, two, three, four, six. Yep. Two, three, four, six. And we're going to go across to the right. And like that, like that, just deselect two, eight, eight, six. Like okay. That. And now assign that to seven, please. Okay, so that population now is within a couple, well, zero. <laughs> okay, now let's look at district, um, district three, we're gonna look at Commerce Township. So that's north of Novi, perfect. And we're going to put more of Commerce Township into district three. Uh, than it currently is in, in either map. So we're gonna take that precinct, 3107, 2966. Two five three nine. Three five one nine. Part of three five that precinct is that's fine. Okay. Two one zero nine. Okay, there you go. Two two eight four. Yep, and those are going to be in six, and then the rest is going to 
be in 10. Can you zoom out? I think we're missing one. Oh, uh, the top one as well. Yep, that one. That puts three within 37 people. Wonderful. Let's look at District 10. Okay, District 10 is short 5,000. Let's zoom out slightly so you can see where that is. Oh, okay. Um, so Washington Township, that one, yep. The one to the north. We're gonna take the top three precincts off of there and put them in a 10. Perfect. And then let's go, let's look at the, um, the right side border between six and 10. So yeah, right over there in that area. Actually, that looks to be fine how it is for now. Okay, so where are we on population? Why is it saying 13%? I think district one and was it just off the map? Yeah, ah, okay, two. the VRA districts, perfect. Okay, so let's look at this. What we're gonna do is slightly adjust that line in between two and one, much like we originally did collaboratively to make the VRA districts work. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I believe since, we, since district two now includes part of Oakland County, that might shift up the, the barrier slightly, right? Because Oakland County has a little bit of a higher percentage than, than Wayne County does that we need to hit. <clears throat> so let's just normalize this now. Um, so can you zoom into that line that's between the two? Uh, the, the east boundary of two or the- Yep, the east boundary. So let's zoom into that part that juts out right there. That's above Dearborn. So let's put that back in one. Okay, I'm gonna turn these labels off. So this area. Right. You can put 1376 in there. Is this the Dearborn area? We're not in Dearborn yet. Okay. It does not go into Dearborn. Okay. Uh, I think purposely so. I don't want to go into Dearborn and disenfranchise, potentially disenfranchise the, the Middle Eastern community that's right. over there. Um, so we're going to do 1413. Yep, all, all three of those. We're kind of just going to take this up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue northward. Yep. 697, 1423, 766. 766. 1218. 874, 1691. Where am I seeing 1691? Right there, you're right hovering there. over it. 962. I'm gonna sign those yep. and then move the whole picture. 962. 1478. 1174. And I think that's it. Okay, now let's just one last change. Let's move down to the, the bottom of this, in the, the southern line between two and three. Do you see those precincts? Two and three or one and two? One and two, sorry. Okay. You're in the right spot. Okay. Those precincts right there, all of those, put them back, put them into one. And the two to the left of it, put it in one. And then the couple of precincts right above Wayne, those, you see that strip? Yep. We're just going to square it off. All four of these? All four of them. Okay. So one and two are good. There's something going on with six. It's between six and 10. 
Your plan deviation looks pretty good. Oh, it's about to get a, a tad bit better. A moment ago, you said that's good enough for now. You were looking right in this area. Well, it, it looks like the deviations between six and 10. You can correct? swap. Yeah, you can split the difference. Yep. One moment. Let me just rebuild the plan on my end because something's not adding up. These are the total population numbers. I don't know if you'll recognize a number. Commissioner Ede, earlier you, you were asking for other commissioners to um to help. Is this do you want help now or do you want or do you want thoughts or well th so this is the general gist of it. We can we can look at six and 10 and adjust a few counties here and there to get the overall population down. But yeah, this was the gist of it. And it's close enough to the final version um, that's in my head to, to work. So I don't know if we want to run the numbers first. And then I do want to get Commissioner Clark's opinion because I know he had a configuration that looked awfully similar to this one. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think this is really helps Oakland County. I think it helps Wayne County by including Southfield and Detroit. Yep. We have Commissioner um, Com Kellum on as well, and I'd love mm -hmm. to see her thoughts on it. Absolutely. Um, Commissioner Witches has a thought. Nope. Okay. So uh, Commissioner Clark, Commissioner Kellum, well, um, any any thoughts? I cannot see your videos if you are. Oh, okay. Give me um, an indication. Here. Yeah. Can, can I go, uh, MC? Please, um, but I, I guess I'm wondering, are you, um, so Commissioner Ede, are you, do you want to sort of hand the floor over to Commissioner Clark or how would you like to proceed, Commissioner Ede? It is your turn. Well, yeah, so I just, I'm looking for feedback now. Thoughts? Are there any, are there any general thoughts on this? What are your general thoughts, Commissioner Clark? Yeah, well, my general thoughts are you did a good job at getting the numbers down. And I haven't seen the partisan fairness ones, but uh, Anthony told, told me about them yesterday. So I'll take that. Uh, should, so we, think, should we run the numbers then? My, the, the, the only thing I, that bothers me with this is the number of changes based on what we did collaboratively. Um, there are a significant number of changes. So it tends to move away from what we did as a group in this area. Um, but, uh, but I, I think it, it could be a good alternative. I've got another one I want to share when, uh, when it, uh, we'll get the opportunity here. Um, okay. It has min minimal changes and uh, uh, I think does justice to the numbers as well. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Clark. Uh, Commissioner Orton. Yeah, my comment is that was a lot of changes to still be considered our collaborative map. But I think before we move on to look at the partisan fairness and the other measures, we should check out the, all the VRA uh, numbers here. Okay. Since it's on the screen. And Commissioner Witches. See, I would disagree. I'd say that this by definition is a collaborative map. We're all here, we can all give input. He made some changes to Detroit. We are collaborating on this map right now. So by definition, this is collaborative. And I think my, my understanding of Commissioner Eads, right, as he was walking us through it, right, he was also trying to address some of the requests for an alternative congressional district in the Detroit area. Because he's from the Detroit area, that's my understanding is that he's trying to give us an alternative collaborative map. So um, may I suggest right now that we, we have two things we want to do is we want to look at the partisan fairness numbers and we want to look at the VA, VRA district. So let's look at the VRA and just make sure that we do have the districts drawn. And Commissioner E, do you want to walk us through that? Have you already looked at that or? Yeah, I mean, the, the districts that we drew on the base map were at about 52%. Um, so we have district two here that includes part of Oakland County. So I think it would be appropriate to cushion that a little bit because Oakland County, I believe, according to Dr. Hanley, was about 22 to 42 to 43%. This gives it about uh, less than a 2% cushion at 44.9%. And I think for District 1, 43.6% is pretty darn close to the about 41 to 42% we had before. Um, but I'm not a 
VRA expert, if our expert would like to comment and maybe you know, we've, what we've been doing is looking at the election results, um, we can. Uh, now would be an appropriate time for feedback on that. Okay, Mr. Adelson is not in the room at the moment, but we could, General Counsel, do you wanna weigh in? Certainly, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, so Mr. Adelson uh, stepped out for a meeting and will be returning uh, shortly. Um, prior to the partisan fairness, the VRA, any of those considerations, the um, planned deviation of 0.47%, the justifications for that would need to be extraordinarily clear because the, the previous plan was at a 0.18 deviation. And remember, this is congressional. So we're down to one person, one vote. So I would, um, okay. or if you'd like to run the numbers to just get a sense of what they are for partisan fairness, but I did want to flag um, the plan deviation. Thank you for that. Can I fix that real quick? Please, please do. Okay, so let's look at that one township we were looking at. Um, Washington Township. Yeah, we're just going to take a little bit more of that and put it into 10. So do you see where that part that jut, juts up is? Yeah, right there. We're going to put that into 10. The other way. That into 10. Commissioner Ede. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Six is too low. Six yeah. is lower, 10 is higher. So you need to do the opposite of what you were looking at. What do we have there? That's different than what's showing up. Can you can you zoom in on there, please? Um, what area here? Um, Washington Township, okay. yeah. So the upper number is the total pop number and like 1805 um, kind of matches up with these 1900, 1600. Okay, let's put that into six uh, into yeah into six i think it would go into 10 but it but you don't the backwards it's the backwards yeah you want to you want to look at 10 this move around want, here so we need to look at the orange is there any chance it was down on this side because there's a bunch of this numbers it's a 1945. I'm looking. I'm looking, y'all. Waldenburg, 1994, 1945. Well, I don't want to split a township that already right. isn't split. So let's just, in between six and 10 over there, let's just add one to make the population deviation work. Like this. Mr. Stigall, your microphone is not on. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there any chance that? These are flip flopped how you did these or something like. Why don't you just assign a little bit more of that township into six? And that should fit that. So that one, five, one, four, one. Okay. We yep. got to move population from 10 into six. No, I'm looking at six being too low right now. Yes. Okay. So I'm sorry. I understand now. I think we're confusing each other by, by doing okay. it backwards. Okay, so we're gonna assign some of these voting precincts into six that are at the bottom here. So, yep, those blocks, exactly, that line. Okay, let's I'm assign just select six. them and- Commissioner Clark, is your hand raised? If, if you're talking, Commissioner Clark, we can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Um, no, uh, let me pass at the moment. Thank you. We will eventually, we're fixing, I think Anthony's fixing right now the plan deviation, then we're going to run the partisan, or excuse me, then we're going to look at the VRA, and then we're going to do the partisan fairness. And then we're, I think he's going to try to get it back to you, Commissioner Clark. So all of that area is 2200. We can remove some of it or whatever. We'll sign it for now, and then we can remove some. Okay, well, this brings it down to 0 0.2. Point, point 0.2. Good. Oh, 0 0.2. 0 yeah, 0.2, sorry. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's run it. Or do we want a VRA analysis now, or do we want to run it until well, we get there first? Th let's look at the, the uh, so we, I think the VRA, right, it's, it's one and two, right? You, you've already talked about the 43% that were within the, the 
black voting age population, but we should look at the, in particular district two where the um, um, uh, Middle Eastern North African, uh, con right? We wanna look at that uh, election results from the uh, El Sayed um, group uh, primary, right? To make sure that district two is still has an opportunity to elect. That's probably the most significant. In in the other one, did did that did the district two as drawn have that? I don't recall that it did. Yeah, my, it's taxing my memory at this point too. I don't know either, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Witches. I would suggest we run the partisan fairness and we wait to do this particular piece until Dr. Adelson's in the room. How are you feeling, Commissioner Eden? Yeah, I I agree. You know, we can wait. He's the expert. I'd rather you know get his advice directly. Okay. So sorry. Uh, Mr. Segal, we're going to just run the partisan fairness. Thank you. So here's your lot lopsided. Um, Lopsided margin and advantage is 4%. Okay. Do you mind if I kind of go through this like we did yesterday? So I have the numbers for the, the base collaborative map two in front of me. That's map 200 on the portal, 10-05-21V1CD, number 200 again. So the lopsided margins test for that one was 7%. With, with only changing Detroit and not touching the west side of the state at all, it's down to 4%. Let's move on to mean median difference. So this went from 3.5% to 2.2%. Let's move on to the next one, efficiency gap. So that went from 8.7% to 0.8%. And now looks, let's look at the seat votes ratio. So this was at 6.2% with um, six uh, Democratic seats and seven Republican seats. It's flipped to 1.5% uh, with seven Democratic seats and six Republican seats. So all four of these measures still favors Republicans. It's just much closer to zero than it was uh, before. Commissioner Orton. How, how can you say that they all favor Republicans? There's more Democratic seats than Republican seats. The, the other margins, I think he was suggesting, right? The seats votes ratio um, I think just as the, op, like the, 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 the majority is reflected in the number of seats, but the efficiency gap, the mean median difference and the lopsided margin each has a favor um, leans Republican. Do you want to show those again? Can you, do you want to walk us through that again? Um, I, I understand that, but oh. he said all of these and oh. this one does not. Got no, it. That, Thank that you. one, from my understanding of the measure, that one does too, because it still takes Democrats 1.5% more votes to win a seat than Republicans. General counsel, could you explain that? I thought it was explained differently. My apologies through the chair to Commissioner Orton. Can you, can Commissioner Ede restate, make the statement again and, and I can clarify? I had stated that all four of the measures still favor Republicans. Uh, my understanding of the seats to votes ratio is that in this case, the seat share, um, basically what it means is to get an equal number of seats, the Democrats need 53.8%, even though they get 52.3% of the vote. And the difference is 1.5%, which is what it says in column K. So you're referencing the bias, the proportionality bias metric in column K to make that assumption. Oh, that, that is my understanding of how this metric of, of the four worked. And so the clarification would be, again, that I, Commissioner Orton, I'm not able to extrapolate that data from this. It's my understanding of the golden rule of seats versus votes is that the, um, is again, that the party that receives the majority of votes, it, that should be reflected and that a small gap is okay. 
such as the gap here of 1.5, um, that a small gap is okay, provided that, again, that it would be reflected in that the party that wins the majority of the votes would that would be represented through the seat count as well, through the seat share, pardon me, through the seat share. Okay, so Commissioner Witches. So I like what was done here in regards to the east side of the state. Um, I do know that the one the the map that I drew on Congressional that connects Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids also got down relatively low, and I know that the the map that Commissioner Clark drew also did the same thing. I don't know if we actually went over that one or not, but it is it is definitely on the portal for download. I would suggest that we would either either since Doug knows his map and and I know mine more intimately, um, we take either tonight or, or, or preferably this evening and make the adjustments to the maps that we drew with those particular configurations on the west side of the state. And then we have four maps that we can bring. We have the collaborative one, we have this one, and then we have the two originals. So that gives four collaborative Senate, I mean, uh, congressional maps that we can bring forth for public comment. And then also, there's also one from Rebecca as well. Right. So I see Commissioner Clark's hand. It, it is Commissioner Ede's turn still. Um, we do have some data. And I think what, what I, if I understood it correctly, Commissioner Ede, you wanted to, so you, yeah. So, well, yeah. so I want to hear Commissioner Clark's thoughts. And I think he has some changes too, if he wants to make a clone of this and we can have another choice. I think more choices are always great for and, me. And I wonder if we could do that. So Commissioner Witches, I think what we could do is if Commissioner <clears throat> Clark wanted to walk us through his changes on your map, then Detroit would be in the same, dis, you know, the same way. So what are you thinking? I think that us working on, on the maps that we've already went over, making the changes to this particular map to get the new choices, but doing that on our own would be much more a better fit with the time that we have left so that we can continue to work on either the Senate or the House map with with us all here okay because these changes we've already made we already analyzed it would take it would for me to go and change my map and make the changes go a lot faster and then i can send it over to the state so they can look at it and then they can upload that new draft to the site and then we can discuss it tomorrow commissioner i, I want to get to commissioner clark too he's got his hand do you want to speak first commissioner Eden? well i just i would really if commissioner Callum is there i would really like her input because she's the other commissioner here that's from the detroit area and I just want to say it was important to me to do this in, in a, you know, in live live here with all of you today. Um, so it can be one of the collaborative maps based on the feedback I got on Monday. Um, because now, you know, it's just another option. We don't have to go with it. I'm not saying we should go with it, but it, it is another option uh, that I think serves the area well. Okay. Um, it is Commissioner Eads' term. He did request Commissioner Kellum uh, feedback. Do you have anything you want to share, Commissioner Kellum? Hi, Commissioner Eade. Um, hi, Commissioner Rothorn, Vice Chair Rothorn, excuse me. So I wanted to kind of wait until Bruce said, you know, gave his expertise on what you've done, but at first glance and, you know, being here as you kind of walk through your analysis of why you were making some of the changes. I don't see anything wrong with what you've done, especially as I um, look at District 1 and, of course, being familiar with the metro area and the suburbs. But I think I think you've done a, a good job as it, as it stands right now. I don't have any Thing, like I said, it's like egregious or something that I'm thinking like, no, Anthony, don't do that. So the, that's kind of what I that's my barometer, and I didn't have moments when I was doing that. Thank you, Commissioner Kellum. Commissioner Clark. Um, yeah, I, the, I'd, I'd like to present my map with the change and show the changes. Um, start from the base that uh, um, Anthony started from, and then um, it's, it's four quick changes. But the, the problem with me using what Anthony has is I used some of the same areas that he did. Um, right. so I, I don't think I could take his and then 
uh, implement on that configuration what I did. So I, I'd like to have a probably 10 minutes max and uh, and present that base. Okay, Commissioner Witches. Then can I suggest that we save this with Anthony's initials and upload this as is to the portal this evening once we're all done? Oh, I, I think we should. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to close this plan and then rename it. Um, it'll have the same name with uh, your name on it, Ede, correct? A -E. Yeah, you can put Ede, you can put AE. Put, put AE. That's the convention, convention we're going with. A is an Apple, E is an Edward. And then Commissioner Ede, it is still your turn, but I'm what I'm hearing, you're, you're open to Commissioner Clark sort of um, presenting, and it feels like... Be yeah, we, I, I think uh, after that, open back up map 200, which was the, the base that I was working on, and let's let Commissioner Clark have at it, see his changes. Okay. Now, map 200 was 10-05-21 version 1 CD. Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah, I'm good with that. Mr. Segal. What was the name again you want to put on, what, on the end of this right here? A as an Anthony, E as an Edward. Okay, gotcha. So tonight when it's, or this evening when it's uploaded, that is the name that will appear on the uh, My Districting site. So, Commissioner Clark, I just want to try to get some clarity because one of the things I thought you were working with was from a, a, as we present collaborative maps, sometimes we right we have we don't have to return to the base. If you want to work from the one that you know had the Kalamazoo and just uh, and uh, Grand Rapids together area, I mean, I suppose that's that's what my question is. Do you want to go back to before that change, um, or do you want to work no, from the map to, with that I change? Do, I want to do the one that does not have Kalamazoo and. Very good. Okay. Just wanted to be clear. Thank you. Um, and uh, Grand Rapids gave us the same one that Anthony did, I believe. Yep. You're exactly right. So you, yes, That's we're on the same page. Yeah. So we, we need to make a clone of that one, um, Kent, when we get started here. So I'm creating a plan and then I'm going to bring that. Uh... Yeah. That the one we brought in earlier in. Correct. Right. Then we can compare the numbers. I think, as I recall, the numbers are similar to uh, what Dustin had. The, ch the changes, though, I made on the east side of the state. I didn't make them over on the west side of the state. So, so Anthony and I used the same concept. We didn't do, make changes to the west. We went to the east. But okay, yeah. And and I did it around Oakland County because I'm more familiar with Oakland County because that's where I live. Um, so a lot of the changes revolve around that. Hmm. So if I understand correctly, Anthony, we're, what we're doing is we're, we're sort of comparing another map that Commissioner uh, Clark is going to draw now over we'll on the partisan fairness, and then um, your turn will be over. Is that is that sort of the plan? I mean, yeah, my turn. Uh, yes, that, I think that is the appropriate way to go. Okay. Who's, who's after me? Commissioner, I believe Commissioner Kellum would be next. Okay. Okay, Commission, this is uh, a new copied in version of to map number 201 on the my districting site. Okay. Let's go to uh, uh, over toward the Oakland County area. We'll make a couple changes here. But the changes I have are not as extensive. Okay, what first one I want to do is go over to uh, Commerce Township. Yeah, which is in three. And you see how commerce is split? I don't. Oh, right here. Yes. I want to take. I want to take all the commerce town, commerce township, and move it into ten. 
some of it's already there, half of it's already there. And that will keep Commerce Township together. Okay, so that's step one. Is that more that, was it not supposed to get this area? Let me, did you want Wixom in there? Let me look. I, um, All right, let me back up here. Did you want Wall Lake in there or just Commerce? Yeah, just Commerce. Okay, let me back up. Well, let me, I got to take. I'm, I'm, I got to get this back straight now. I'm gonna put that in three. No, no, no. I want all that. I want everything. You want everything. walled like. Yeah, and everything above that bottom line there. So every little thing, the the precinct next to it, and then the one, two, three, four, five, six ones to the west, one to the east, and six to the west. Yeah. Okay. I, I just thought it had gone too far over here. Yeah, that's what I want in 10. So he is taking parts of Wixom, or do you intend to split Wixom, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Clark? Yeah, it just, yeah, that's all I want right now. Yeah. So okay. now go, go to Oakland County. And I want to take, um, I want to take Birmingham and Clawson. Um, and Birmingham want, and Clawson. You're going to yeah. put them where? I want to move them uh, to, to the Troy area. So Which whatever. Is six. Is that six? six. Okay. Yes. Okay. Clawson into six. Yep, and Birmingham. And Birmingham into six. Yep, and then that's lots based that the Birmingham one's based on comments we heard from Troy people that they want to be more associated with people to the west. So that's why I did that. Okay, now I want to go um, uh, north of of six. Okay, okay. Take out Washington Township and move it to ten. And then I want to take out the, oh boy, I don't, I can't remember. Over in Oakland Township, I want to take out one of the precincts, and I can't remember which one I took out. So I will have to, let me look real quick, my map. Uh, the, the, uh, the top one, take, take that and move it to 10. Yeah, that one. Okay, and uh, that's all. The, that's all the changes I made. So let's look at the numbers. The Thirteen. Well, Excuse something's me. Wrong. Something's wrong. Yes, with three. we've got three and ten are still a long ways from being reconciled. Um. Well, let me look at my map. Commissioner Witches. While we're looking here, uh, well, 10's kind of still over, but just at first glance, the only thing that I potentially could see an issue with this map is that there is way too much from the Metro Detroit area going up into the thumb. That's going to be way, 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 way different. Is this, um, I'm asking, was this... Is this supposed to be in 10, this area here? I mean, because this is where we were working. Did I? Where? I mean, it, it has to be in this area. Was 10 there before? I'm, I'm, we... I'm asking. I don't know if I erroneously clicked on a township or. Commissioner Eden? Well, Doug, no, here's Wixom. We brought it all the way down. Doug, was Commerce and White Lake in District 3 or in District 10 on your map? He, that was the area he put commerce into intentionally. 
I just, what I have in three is, yeah, I, I mean, every, everything south of where, hold on. Commissioner Witches and then Commissioner Orton. I'm, I'm looking at the shape file online on the, on the portal. And yeah. in, the, in this map, Commerce Township and Walled Lake are in District 3. Commissioner Orton? I can't, I'm okay. thinking maybe okay. if you change the color right. of either 10 or 3 online, it might be hard to see. Yes, let me change it because this was the area we he asked me yeah, to put I into think, 10. I yeah, I think that's where the screw up was. Okay, so, so it know, doesn't. It yeah, because I'm looking at my map too, and I'm seeing. Yeah, I'm seeing the same thing. Commerce Township was in three, not ten. I probably misdirected you on that. Okay. Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm sure that's what it was because this is where we started, and so yeah. this, all this area should be in three. Right. I'm going to select it, and then um, we'll go from there. So, and I think I think that's going to resolve the issue. So I'm going to put that in three. Just oh, one yeah. step at a, just oh, one yeah. step at a time. <laughs> so then all of commerce into three. But not white light. But not white light, correct. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. We just yeah. got mixed up yeah. on well, how this that looks more like the numbers. Okay. So the numbers were the, the differential was down. I mean, in, it, it's in, in the right, all in the right deviation, all less than point, point 0.1. Commissioner Eid? So, so I've done, yeah, go ahead, Anthony. Well, I, I'll just say I like the changes you made to Oakland County. Um, yeah. they're, they're, they're similar to the ones that I made. Mine went a little further, but um i i do i do like these changes when compared to to the base that you were working on um so yeah so commissioner Orton, and, and then back to commissioner clark i do like that this keeps southfield and pontiac together which is something we heard about and yeah. you know tried to do and it and bruce liked it for the for the numbers and there are there are minimal changes so why don't we look at the partisan fairness numbers and see where we're at there. Um, and, I, and I think what we're gonna do is find them similar to what Dustin and Anthony did. Um, Thanks, Commissioner Clark. Commissioner Eid, would you walk us through? Um, you want me to walk you through as you no, I think Commissioner Eid has um, has a spreadsheet that he's been tracking, and it, it's sometimes useful for us to understand and com for the comparison okay. purposes. Okay, that's fine. Sure. So, the what we're on lopsided margins. So, yep. uh, the original base map. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you guys want me to just read the base, or do you want me to read all all three? Just the original from the changes that, you know, from what it was to what it is now. What it is now. Okay. So it went from 7% to 4.1%. Yep. For the mean median difference, it went from 3.5% to 2.7%. Mm -hmm. And those both are Republican. Right. Um, so for the efficiency gap, it went from 8.7% to 0.8 percent and yeah it's the same so and for seat bias it went from 6.2 percent down to 1.5 percent with yep. a seven to six ratio where the the party that's receiving the most votes gets the most seats thank you so commissioner it, it Gen is quite similar to the numbers that that mine had as well commissioner clark and commissioner e, uh, general counsel has a thought just a brief observation. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I did want to acknowledge um, that I, I believe when we were speaking about the seats, row, seats to votes ratio earlier that Commissioner E did, um, I think you flipped it uh, in the explanation. So the, the proportionality bias of 1.5, that that does favor Democrats. So um, 
again, which they get the higher percentage of votes. So, so that margin is appropriate, but if it was reduced by 1.5%, the bias would be zero. So I, it, the way that Commissioner Orton interpreted it was, was correct. I think that it was, it, it was just flipped. So the, the statement of it was flipped. So in other words, um, looking at the screen that's up right now, let me be more precise. The vote share being 52.3%, that if Democrats won 52.3% of the vote, they would uh, win 53.8% of the seats. And if Republicans won 47.7 of the votes, they would win 46.2% of the seats. And I think that is, is how the proportionality bias is framed. And, and so again, this would, um, this would be more in line with what Commissioner Orton was was indicating that that this metric in in this form does not favor Republicans. So the other three, while they showed a Republican lean, this one um, would not. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification, Commissioner E. Oh. Thank you for that clarification, General Counsel. I think yeah, I think the sign switch so it messed me up. We do have an an odd number of seats now. Right, it went from 14 to 13. So how does that how does that work with this number? And the, and through the chair to commissioner, you know, this this number based on the the fact that currently in in Michigan the Democratic Party has the data demonstrates they have uh, won a higher percentage of the seats over well over overall this metric is appropriate. Okay. Back to Commissioner Clark, and then it is Commissioner Eads' turn, but I want to wrap it up, yeah. and we do, we do have Mr. Adelson back in the room with us. Yeah, real, just real quick. I mean, the changes I made would kind of interfere with some of the things, not many, but some of the things that Anthony did. Um, but we got, I think we've got pretty good alternatives uh, to, look at, to take a look at as, as we go forward. And all three, the numbers are, are, are all in the same ballpark. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. I see Commissioner Orton and then Commissioner Witches. Um, I just wonder if we could have Bruce look at the VRA things now. Commissioner Witches. Yeah, I'm just going to echo again what I said earlier. District 10 is <laughs> quite strange um, to me. I, I don't see the, the townships of Oakland County um, especially Milford, White Lake, all of those particular townships being anywhere remotely and have anything remotely in common with, with townships that are near the thumb um, whatsoever, un, un, unfortunately. I mean, it, it, this does do wonders for partisan fairness, for sure, but that is... Um, I, I don't. I don't see this being an appropriate uh, district, especially number ten. Thank you, Commissioner Witches. Um, I believe our legal team is sort of uh, connecting with each other, and um, as Commissioner Orton um, asked, I think we're going to try to get the uh, the VRA analysis on both of the two congressional changes. So, Commissioner Clark, we'll start with this one, and then we'll go back to Commissioner Eads, and then we'll try to move on. Mr. Adelson, welcome back. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be back. So I think um, Commissioner Clark or Commissioner Eid, it's your turn, Commissioner Eid. How do you want to proceed? Well, Commissioner Clark didn't change the Detroit district, the, the two VRA ones at all, did he? Oh, that is uh, true. No, but I this is the one that we... I didn't touch true. Detroit. You didn't touch Detroit, which means that... So what I think you're saying, Commissioner Eid, is that we don't necessarily have to rerun it. So it's just yours. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, fair enough. So, um, and, and uh, we'll just acknowledge that it is at, uh, that the original, so to speak, is at 41%, District 1 is at 41.4% uh, Black voting age population, and District 2 is at 42.1, or 42.2%. Right. Okay. Can I make one request, MC? To Please, have, uh, to, yeah, to have Kent save this in the same manner he saved Anthony's. Yeah, it, so it currently is. Your initials are on the end of the uh, file name. And when this is posted to the My Districting site, that is the uh, plan name that will be posted. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. So let's, um, let's close out this one, uh, please, Mr. Stagall, and bring up the one that we did uh, 10, 7, 21, 
CD with AE. And Commissioner Ede, if you could help uh, walk us through so that Mr. Adelson can, um, yeah. Wonderful. So yeah, um, Mr. Adelson, I made a couple of changes to the Detroit metro area here because I wanted to give the Detroit metro area another collaborative option as the other two had, had the same metro Detroit configuration. Uh, the main changes were district two adds Southfield, which is in Oakland County. Um, and the, the line between one and two are changed a little bit. So our non-Hispanic black VAP population for district one is 43.6%. And for district two, which is the one that includes Oakland County was 44.91%. Um, <clears throat> I know that in our analysis, we said Oakland County has a little bit of a higher threshold to meet. Um, so I would think that this is appropriate, but I'm wondering uh, what you think about them. Excuse me, thank you. Do, do, do you have the what the numbers were before the changes? Yeah, so these are about 2% higher, roughly. I think it was 41 point, I mean, you just, Commissioner Rothorn, you just read them off. 41.41 for District 1. District 2 was 42.18. Thank you. Can we also, with, did this implicate um, Hamtramck and Dearborn at all? So it did not implicate Hamtramck, but for two, it includes Southfield with District 2. Uh, so it does not change Dearborn, but it includes Southfield in the same district as Dearborn. And for, from a community standpoint, I think that's appropriate, but I'm not sure if it does anything to say the election results or anything like that. And the, the, I'm reading correctly at the top right, the plan deviation is 0.20. That's for the plan you worked on? That's correct. Okay, okay then I would suggest why don't we look at the um, bellwether election results for one and two, please. Let me make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. Thank you. And I'm, you know, more than happy to read them out if you want to do. But one is seventy-six percent Democrat, twenty-four Republican. Biden seventy-five percent. Trump twenty-five per seventy-five percent Biden, twenty-five percent Trump in twenty twenty. Twenty twelve, it was Obama eighty-one, Romney eighteen, Peter seventy-five. James, 25. And then Stabenow, 74. James, and 26. Whitmer, 76. Shoot, or shooty, 24%. Dillard, 72%. Johnson, 28%. And that was District 1. Could we also look at the um, 2000... 18, I think, the gubernatorial primary, please. I noticed in this, we brought it up a little while ago. I mean, I just saw it just now. The hittings aren't showing up here for some reason. Um, but it's I, El Saeed in the left column, Tanadar in the middle, and then um, yeah, Whitmer. I, I can, I just noticed that a few minutes ago, but um, so, so we don't have the percentages, but, but we have the raw number. Yeah, Whitmer ahead. Um, so which can if you which one if you could just highlight which is district one and which is district oh, two? Oh, it's please. it's the top two. Okay. So move down here. Um. I see. Okay. So and district two has contains. Dearborn, am I correct? Correct. Yes, sir. It's the, the, the middle green district in the picture. And District 1 is Hamtramck wrapping around, um, mainly Detroit and going southward. Okay, thank you. And what we, we what I think um, the question that Commissioner Ede asked that I wasn't able to answer was, did we actually, do we know if District 2 
in our original map before the adjustment was made also had, like, had an opportunity to elect. It does not have an opportunity to elect here, right? District to have that, um, the El Sayed does not win, Whitmer wins, but we weren't sure if District 2 actually did win or give El Sayed the opportunity to win when, if, as originally drawn. If District 2 originally had Dearborn in it, then as I recall, it did. I think the electoral margin has changed a little bit. It, the, the margin came down for El Sayed, but he's still, um, yes, and I see with um, Whit Whitmer is significantly ahead. Yeah, I mean, Whitmer is 14,000 ahead. I mean, El Sayed um, is number two. That was my, my recollection is that the Dearborn district did give the um, Middle Eastern population an opportunity, uh, an ability to elect. My recollection is that he he won pretty handily. So that's, I, that, that's what I remember. Okay, Commissioner Orton and then Commissioner Eaton. We have that. Why don't we just pull it up and see? All right, let's do it. You open up the other plan. Um, let's yeah, just, so that was plan 200. But let's record these numbers so we can remember them, if we please, before you close it, uh, Mr. Stegall. Well, I'm going to um, copy paste them into Excel oh, spreadsheet. Good thinking. And Absolutely. Then we'll just lay them right on top of each other. Okay. Thank you. As far as the other elections, um, Anything on those that we should know? No, the other elections are basically three to one margins. So they indicate an ability to elect. I think as we've talked about before, I mean, this is a um, significantly democratic area. And Dr. Hanley had intuited that there's crossover support. So uh, that's certainly in, in indicated by the numbers. The margin may be somewhat lower than previously, but it's still a, it's a pretty heavy advantage, three to one. So they, all the other election results look good. I'm up, it'll swap, move out. So I'm just gonna put it right down here. Um, at least I thought it was. Let me back up. Okay, this will be Anthony's plan that we're looking at. Anyway, so then I'm gonna go over here and just, I'm gonna open up uh, Doug Clark's plan because he didn't mess with districts one or two, correct? That is true. And I don't have to download it and go through that, but I will because at some point. I think this uh, districts one and two were unchanged in his plan. Um, so just to compare them, I didn't get the headings. Let me get the headings so we aren't wondering what we're looking at. I, I think we mostly want to look at the end. It's okay. Oh, you just gonna, okay. Mr. Stigall, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Let's just, let's just look at the, the data on the map. Okay. So um, no, Saeed did not, in the original plan, he had a little higher numbers but he did not carry the the primary in either it it looks like in the adjustments that uh commissioner Ede made he did achieve more like a higher result um right more raw numbers right 38 instead of thirty five thousand. he did but the margin is 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 less than, oh um, right the, it's the margin is ten thousand down from 14 or 15 then. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay. Okay, so the pretty, you know, he loses either way. Margin's a little different, but 
I, 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 does this, does including Southfield with Detroit overall, taking a totality of the evidence, does it get a check mark or what do you think? I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but I, I hear in the work that I do, totality of the evidence and totality of the circumstances an awful lot. So uh, forgive my brief um, legal chuckle. So the election results, as I said, are basically the same, the bellwether election results between the two plans. I, I don't recall, and it might have might be one of the state legislative plans. My recollection is that El Sayed was elected in, as I said, whether it's the House or the Senate or both, I just don't remember. Um, so it, it, in a way, it's not surprising given that the congressional district's population is about 770,000 people per district. So the election results are, are comparable. The, remember, the uh, margins are not dispositive. There don't have to be every election that gets carried, but the margins are pretty significant, three to one, as I said. So between the two of them, from an ability to elect perspective, just looking at the election results, I think they're both okay. Thank you, Mr. Adelson. All right, so, um, and thank you for putting that spreadsheet together for us, Mr. Stigall. I do believe what we, are, have we concluded your turn, Commissioner Eid? Yeah, you know, what I wanted to do was give Detroit a few uh, extra configurations to look at without really messing with the west side of the state too much. And I think we now have two more, so I'm satisfied. Um, I think the public will be satisfied with having some choices. So thank you, Commissioner Clark, Commissioner Kellum, who chimed in. And yeah, I, I yield back my time. All right. Thanks very much. Commissioner Kellum, um, we were currently in the congressional. We were working on the House earlier this morning, I think, as you know. Um, where would you like to go? Or do you, yeah. Wherever it makes most sense for us to kind of continue on. Um, if you we want to go back to the House, that's totally fine. Where Mr. Adelson has a thought. May okay. I suggest that... Uh, Good afternoon, Commissioner Kellum. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I hope you're doing well. Thank you. What I would suggest, because we now have, as Commissioner Eats said, you have an additional option to congressional plan. Did a lot of work with the House this morning, and it's Thursday afternoon. So my respectful suggestion would be, how about if we go to the Senate? Okay, I'll take that suggestion. And I believe, so we had two congressionals, but we only have one Senate, I believe, that is sort of uh, on the shelf, so to speak. Um, I don't know if any of our commissioners can help us know which number that is uh, for Mr. Stigall or Mr. Stigall, do you know? No, I was out of circulation there for a few days. So did y'all work on, um, here's- Commissioner Orton, Commissioner Orton, I think has we it. We can download it and get started. I'm sure it's on the, my on district. On mine, it's the only one that's labeled complete that isn't someone else's initials. Okay, the then I'll... I, one I have uh, from the conversation the other day is number 165. What's the name on it? I'm guessing it has to be. 91521V16ASD. Yeah, that, would, that sounds right, because that's probably the last time that y'all did Senate that district work that's other that's than true. Rebecca Zatella. Commissioner Zatella. Uh, Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Clark. Oh, I, I was just asking Cynthia, is that the number she had? Guess she didn't hear. Mine says the word complete after it. Yes, is Commissioner. There... When I uploaded the plan, I marked a complete at once on the My Districting site. But if the name of it is, is it 91521V16ASD? If that's what it is on My Districting, then this is it. Will you say that again? <laughs> okay. 91521 and then V16ASD. I can download it again. Yes, I do have that one, but let me see. Um, we have more recent ones with a different number, which also say complete on them. The, the complete is when the, the, the state was done in its entirety. 
So I think like the initial ones were independent drawers. Um, people drew. Now that this may have been the last completed statewide one. I don't know. So Commissioner Witt just wanted to get in and then I saw it's Commissioner Ead's hand. Okay, so this is something that I've just noticed and it's more along the lines of just food for thought for everybody in regards to the west side and the east side of the state. Um, we've had public comments stating that Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids shouldn't be together. We've also had some that said they should. Wouldn't it make more sense? Okay, let's look at looking at the District 10 that we had that had Milford and White Lake area going up all the way to the thumb, for example. Are you talking congressional? Congressional, congressional. thank you. Let's, let's, let's just try to, I don't need to pull it up or anything. Let's just try and remember what it looked like. Couldn't you make the argument that those particular townships that are in the, the, the northern side of Oakland County that are connected to the thumb, those are two very vastly different regions and, and, and communities, I would say. Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids, we are connecting two cities, a city, nothing, and a city. I would, if, if there was a big city in the thumb, I'd say that would be an appropriate thing to do because then you're linking two different communities together. Whereas when we're in, when we're looking at Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids, we have two cities that are going to be connected together. Does that make more sense in regards to communities of interest on the west side of the state with Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids, as opposed to taking what I consider to be pretty densely suburban areas and pushing them up to the thumb where there really isn't, I don't want to say there isn't much, but it's mostly all farmland. Just something to keep in mind when it comes to that particular district that I drew with Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids. It's just food for thought. Thank you, Commissioner Witches. Um, do we yet have, do we, I don't know if we actually resolved yet which plan we're opening. And I, I did uh, hear you, Commissioner Ede. Do you, you want to speak directly to that or is that something else? Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Ede. So the last collaborative state Senate map, I mean, we really only have one um, at this point and it was It was uh, 199, which says 10-421-V2 SD, uploaded on the 4th. Because we, and yeah, you see we had an AM and PM session. I believe the AM session was supposed to be deleted, but that hasn't happened. But I believe that is the latest collaborative map uh, that we have for the state Senate. Okay. Yeah, when I left, it was, these 915, there was like four versions. And then earlier this week on the 4th, which would have been Monday, um, John posted these. Yeah, so so I, if- So if I think it, Commissioner Ede's recollection is correct. Let's, let's try 199 and then Commissioner Kellum, we're gonna, yeah, I think we'll just try to see if um, other commissioners recognize it. If you recognize it, then we'll just go with it. But that is, that is the best we can do at this point. Okay, other people are nodding, other commissioners are nodding their head that this is the right one. This is our collaborative Senate map. And I believe um, what we're trying to do here is, um, and Mr. Adelson, I'm gonna ask for direction, but I think, right, um, um, what we're doing is we've run a partisan fairness measure. We've run, right, this is a, Right, we've, we've completed it. And what we're trying to do at this point is improve a partisan fairness score within the Senate district. Is that accurate? First, uh, we recommend that the numbers uh, be displayed so we can see them again and compare them with um, what we've been looking at because there we've been looking at a lot of plans. So frankly, just so we can keep in order where the Senate is, and then we can advise about next steps. So um, the numbers being partisan fairness numbers? Yes. Okay. Mr. Adelson, do you mind repeating that? Because I have quite a noisy train in my background, so I did not at all hear it. And I was trying to urgently uh, shut the window. I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Gallum, but having grown up in the Bronx, I know all about 
we see trains. So what I said was the, um, the Senate map, let's look at the partisan fairness numbers with the metrics so we can see where we are now and then advise about next steps after we see what the, the partisan fairness numbers look like. Thank okay, you I'm for doing do, that. Uh, Commission, I'm gonna do two things. I'm downloading that plan and creating it, but then I'm gonna copy it again and we'll modify it. So we'll have both of them sitting here to be looked at for the next couple of days, rather than going back and forth. Thank you, Mr. Stigall. So at this point, I'm going to rename that right there. But at this point, this is the 10.04.21 V2 SD plan that was downloaded off the my districting just this moment. I made a copy of it or vice versa. And this is the one we're about to edit. I'm going to do one thing and 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 give it a version one name. Okay, so as it stands, this is what was posted on my districting, and we downloaded it. And this is what we're about to edit. So we can look at the partisan, uh, the date on this plan by opening it, running the partisan fairness, and what other reports. Let's start with partisan fairness. Okay. So here it is, I'm gonna leave this file right here. We can come back to it. Um, I just let me save this, no. Okay, so I'm just gonna close it down out of the way. So I'm gonna save this right here and then we'll open up the, the working plan, the plan where we're gonna work on or somebody's gonna work on. Um, That'll be Commissioner Kellen. And we'll, we'll make a run the, as she makes her edits, then we can run it again, compare them side by side. Very good. And um, we were trying to be methodical. You've been methodical up to this mm -hmm. point. Um, will you help us remember, Mr. Adelson, what, what our method is and how we adjust for partisan fairness and try to, yeah. Sure, I'd be happy to. Should we? Should we wait until we see the numbers or should we do that now? Oh yeah. Well, I guess we have the numbers up and they were going to be there for comparison. Um, yeah. So that, but that's how we, that's how we start. Right. Okay. So let's walk through the numbers there. Do you want to walk us through Mr. Adelson? Sure. The lopsided margin advantage is 5.7% a week, but we're not comparing this to another plan. We're just looking at it in isolation. This is our baseline. Okay. So let's go to the mean median difference. 3.4%, efficiency gap, 6.2%. Yeah. 
And the, yes, the Senate seats ratio. Wow. So this shows a 50-50 a proportionality bias, about 2.3%, and in line with the uh, uh, the vote shares, about 52% Democratic and about 48% Republican. They're consulting. I see. Mr. Stigall, can yes. you please may you please uh, leave seats votes up while we carbuncle? Thank Excuse you. Excuse me, they're not consulting, they're carbuncling. Is that a legal term, MC? Apparently. Vice Chair Rothhorn or um, any other commissioners. I know that for the other maps, we were kind of using a list to determine where we wanted to start. Are we having ideas for that now or are we waiting for Bruce to kind of determine a good place for us to begin editing? Yes, I believe that is the question. Like we're just gonna okay. try to form that list. And I think we're just trying to be as specific as possible about which that list is. We've used the lopsided margins before mm -hmm. we've used partisan. And I think that's where, I think that's why they're carbuncling. Okay, just double checking that I was tracking correctly. Right on. There weren't any other ideas besides <laughs> them huddling. Cause you know, we make our own decisions. We do. Um, and it's such a legal process, this compliance thing. Um, yeah, it feels like we need to end because we have such a time um, constraint. We mm -hmm. are, okay. Okay, so our recommendation is that we save this plan. And since we uh, have not, don't have a, a second plan that has gone through partisan fairness, that we begin with uh, an alternative so that the commission then will have at least two Senate plans that have gone through both uh, compliance and evaluative process about partisan fairness. So save this as plan A, like, well, I'm not assigning any value to that. And then have a second plan that um, perhaps, uh, well, we focus on partisan fairness. Right. And then have that as an option. Okay. So can and, we? Oh, and excuse me. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. And then also, of course, address the deviation, which is about nine percent. In the alternative plan. Yeah, in the alternative plan. That's that's a great point, General Counsel. That the alternative plan can strive for a lower deviation, and see if the, it it can uh, provide an another option concerning partisan fairness. Excellent. So, um, in order to help, um, you know, sort of again be you know, give us some system to use. Like, should we use the lopsided margins test and try to address in the Senate plan, for example, create a list of those that are most likely to be swayed, right? The closest to 50%, is that? Absolutely. We think, we've, uh, we feel that that's a good approach, looking down the list of districts to see what the competitive difference is. And in districts that are close, like for example, district, Seven, I'm just looking at the list, uh, the, um, has a 51.1% Republican advantage. It's pretty close numerically. So that, that would be one place to look. And then we can go down the list yeah. further to come up with some additional. Districts. Will you help us help walk us down so we can create that list, please? Absolutely. So let's look at District 7. District... 16, that's 53.1 percent. I think district 15 is a little high. District is that 53.6? Is that 18 or 17? Can't the Republican margin 53.6? I think that's eight, yeah, 18. 
I'm going to highlight the numbers he calls out and I'm going to copy paste them separately so we get that separate list again. If that's, great. that's makes a sense. great idea. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Ken. Uh, let's go down if we 24, 53.9, District 24. And I think let's let's start there. Just for clarification, I think you said 24, but I see 34 highlighted. Yes, and 34 too. Okay. Let's take the opportunity to highlight District 34, though being a 50-50 split. <laughs> and that is the one that's on the west side of the state. Okay, um, uh, Commissioner Kelm, you have the floor and I see I see Mr. Brace's hand, but not anything else. Mr. Brace, do you have a comment or? Um, yes, if you can hear me. Um, uh, I guess my camera is not uh, functioning or not allowed in, but um, I do have, we have created the Senate overlays for the, for the districts that have up to 54% Republican on the red blue maps, like what we talked about. And I can send those to you now. So you can you. use that as part of your research efforts. Thank you, Mr. Brace. So these are the, I believe the five districts we initially started with. Is 34 supposed to be in there? Yes. yes. Okay. It's because it's a 50 50. So, you know, this is a starting point if you want to start. Uh, and the, this column is not supposed to be there. There, that makes a whole lot more sense. Um, okay. Um, 18, 24, 34. Was someone going to say something? It sounded like it. You have the floor, Commissioner Kellum. Okay. Can, can we go back to, yep, what's happening? Never mind, I don't want to have to ask. Okay, I was this, gonna say, can, we, can we go back to the map so I can see where these right. um, districts are? So what I did was the plan I downloaded, and y'all mm -hmm. said is the base map for the Senate. I just put a little tag name on it so that two days from now or whenever I'm back here, this is the plan y'all completed and chose to start this plan with. So this plan is a copy of that as of right this moment. Okay. And here's the, the plan that is a copy of the base Senate district map. And where do we start? Let me zoom in just a little bit. I'm wanting to say maybe district seven, but I'm not sure. Well, I'll just go zoom to it. And if you want to look at it, we'll do it. District seven is on Lake St. Clair. Where's the other one? 2434. Okay. And what's, can you zoom into to 16? District 16 mm -hmm. is north of Detroit. Rochester Hills. Rochester that, yeah, Hills. That's what that says. And Commissioner okay. Kellen, we do have that tool that allows us, you know, with the, the Democrats, Republicans, the single vote, uh, excuse, excuse me, a sing, the elections, the results of a single election. Are you, from, do you, I'm not sure if I'm making it clear what I'm, are, are you aware of that tool that we have now? The po, let, the, me, the, let me see it and then I'll say yes or no. <laughs> okay, I think, I think Kent is bringing it up right now. Mm -hmm. We've been doing the, the, the 2016 presidential and yes. So there's the two. There will be the Democrats and the Republicans. They'll be in their representative color of blue and red. The higher number, whichever is the, gets the most votes, will be the top digit displayed. 
Oh, in this case, we're looking at just a, uh, this is county. So it's 343,087 Democratic votes, 289,136. As we zoom in, it will put this similar number up for the precinct. So this precinct had 902 red votes, 720 blue votes. If you move, of course, if you move more red out than blue, it's going to make this district uh, perform more blue. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if we move red out and bring blue in number wise, it'll be a more blue district. Okay. And is that what we want for 16? I didn't jot down. Can other commissioners, can you chime in to, if you took more prescriptive notes for each district as we were kind of. So Commissioner Eade has his hand. Sorry, uh, Mr. Okay. Segal. Yeah, I just want to say 14 with Pontiac was drawn that way for VRA reasons. So we might not want to change that one too much. But um, uh, yeah, this is unique. Ones. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's it. Go ahead. Okay. Um, this is how I'm just determining where I'm where I want to start. I'm leaning towards given all that information, maybe starting at um, starting with seven. I'm going to change the colors of sixteen real quick because it's okay. impossible to see. Difficult to see. I don't know if I want to do that either. No, actually, let's. Hmm. And I, I think you may, I mean, not that you have to, but with these deviations, if you kind of keep it in mind, you might be able to kill two birds with one stone with the partisan and the deviation with a, some careful attention to the detail. Or what, District 7? Is that what you're saying? For a suggestion? For any of them. Any you of know, them. Modifying okay. seven, if you pay attention, it's a little bit high. If you took a little population for something that is a little bit, if you gave population to something low, you could do two things at once. Okay. Let's look at seven. Um, commissioners, I don't know the New Baltimore, Marine City, Algonac area that well. Um, of course, a little less about Mount Clemens as we talk about Groves Point, St. Clair Shores. I'm familiar with that, but I mean, um, I know this is just uh, chime in if you have input. It's basically Commissioner Orton. Okay. So, nice. hi, Brittany. Hi. Um, I th I'm thinking if you, let me see the five and six. Okay, five is really low, so you don't want to take from there, but six, if you put some mm -hmm. from the bottom of six into mm -hmm. seven, mm -hmm. it might help balance it. Okay. You may need Can to take something out of the top, but maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Orton. That makes sense. And Mr. Adelson has a thought, too. I was I just going to add didn't want to touch five. And that's just what I was going to say. So <laughs> yeah. Looking at the partisan fairness aspect to your having those numbers plus also the uh, deviations, that's the uh, going to, to Kent's point before dealing with two issues as much as we can simultaneously. Which was the deep, okay. Deviation and the fairness. And have we, are we identifying also VRA districts where we want to not change the deviation or at least acknowledge that we have worked on it hard enough that we're not going to try? In looking at the list that, that uh, Ken pulled up before, I don't believe any of those implicated the VRA. However, I think we all have an idea of the area that is uh, relevant and has been the subject of so much hard work. So seven is not that type of district. Agreed. So having the partisan numbers plus looking at the deviation, I think seven has some possibilities. You have the floor, Commissioner Kellen. Okay. Yeah, I was. I Kim Ken is working with. I'm trying to get this map laid out so. No, I know it's, that's it's why it's easier I for, for everybody yeah. that to identify. I couldn't tell where two and fourteen, where one began and the other ended. So um, now I think we can discern twenty-five, seven, five, and two, and six touches seven down here. 
Right. And that's the area that we're going to take off some of seven that in that lower portion and put into an assign to district six. So taking out unassigning that portion of probably Gross Point Park and Gross Point and assigning that into district six. Commissioner Orton has a thought too. And then Mr. Segal. Yeah, Just Commissioner Orton, you can keep talking to me. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Just quickly before any changes are made, maybe we should jot down the um, the numbers. VRA numbers just to make sure we don't mess something up. Is that I what think you're six was what, what I was gonna say, this is a classic case of you're looking at this area to move into six. We're trying to make seven more blue. So looking at the this in this area down here, it is predominantly blue. So if you move blue out, you're actually lowering the Democrat vote, mm. not increasing it. So we want to either move red out or blue in. I think she's talking about moving blue out of six into seven, because isn't that where we want more? Well, yeah, seven is already a little bit high and you can do that. Sure. Okay. We're on the right page. Sorry. Okay. And do we want to write the numbers down the VRA numbers? Is that right? Just in case. So six um, black um, voting age population is 39.86 for number six district seven um, is 11.2. And then eight is 40. Well, I think we're just working on six and seven right now. Okay. I was just taking a quick look to see if there was anything, you know, close that we had to be careful around. And also I would suggest that with the, the thought of seeing if seven can become different, can flip from partisan fairness standpoint, as you point out, Ken, the, the the area in six that goes diagonally from north to south is an overwhelmingly from the numbers, seemingly democratic heavy area. So it is possible that by moving some of the, that population into seven, that would not have a dramatic effect on the numbers for six while having the possibility of increasing the fairness to seven. Because you just look at the percentages for 582 Democrat to seven Republicans in this whole area. I think that, you know, admittedly math is not my number one skill, but Mine I would think either. that, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you, Commissioner Kellum, that that could have- Science uh, brain, but not that, math. <laughs> yeah, that could have, that could get us where we're interested in going, because as I recall, seven was- 51.1% Republicans, so it's pretty close. So there, pro there may not need to be a lot of adjustments. Okay, Bruce, is that so your way this, of saying that I can try and make that effort and see what happens? Oh, you know, I believe that, that this is, <laughs> this, this, is the, the, this is the area that, uh, that I think you were inclined to look at and the, the numbers certainly bear that out. Okay, thank you, Bruce, for the gold star and thank you, Commissioner <laughs> Orton, for the boost of confidence. So am I gonna select a precinct or three down here? Is that what I'm doing, Commissioner the, Cullum? Yes. We can always put them back. I'm just gonna highlight them and you can make a decision as to what to do. Mm -hmm. So that's five, 5,600 people in that, those precincts. Um, so if we remove some, and I, I think you would have to put some back, but that's, that's 1,900 coming out of six. or that's 3,200 coming out of six. Um, what, do, what do you wanna do? You wanna assign this to seven or parts of it? Mm, assign it to seven. So 
so six now is 39, still 39.41, uh, non-Hispanic, black. Seven is now, you know, well over, um, overpopulated. Mm -hmm. And we could look at the the, the Democrat uh, election results to get an idea. Mm -hmm. So seven. Okay. Yeah, the performance is unchanged. At this point, if you want it, District Seven is overpopulated, so you may choose to move some red precincts out of seven. Okay, commissioners, do you have any suggestions as to where I do that? If, if I go maybe to the northern part of District 7 or? Yes, that's where the nodding heads are. Okay, can, can I get, thank you, Commissioner Clark, are you wanting to talk to me about suge specific suggestions? You're on mute, Commissioner Clark. Now, how am I supposed to hear you? Well, I was doing sign language. Oh, well, <laughs> Katie hasn't probably, taught me, so I don't know how to do that. I probably didn't have my video on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can we go? Yeah, I would. Well, I don't. I don't know what. I, I, I would tell. Commissioner you, Orton has a thought too, uh, Commissioner Clark, if you want. Let's go. Yeah, north. I mean, I can select, but I feel that we should be intentional rather than it just be me like plucking. Right. Commissioner Orton has a thought. So I see that um, on the active matrix, we can see five is down a lot. So maybe some of seven can go into five. The western I was, side? Yeah, I was thinking yeah. up north, but maybe that's a good spot. But maybe we should look at five and make sure we're not going to mess anything else up. I mean, you have a high number of 672 or higher number, but then, I mean, that's just the portion of the screen. It doesn't seem like there are, I'm looking for higher red numbers. I think that would work. Okay. And I don't think you have to move too much. Okay. So go slow to move fast. Do you want to, uh, with the help of, Ken is the scribe, <laughs> um, Commissioner Clark and Commissioner Orton. I'm, 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 look, I'm looking at where the 755 red is. Yeah, right there. Oh, okay. And then the 623. I start small and let's go from there first. Okay. This this precinct here, 755 428, has 2,700 people. Yeah. So it's it's not too many. Cynthia is nodding her head. Okay. Thank you, MC. Let's unassign that then. Put that into five. assign. I'm assigning this area, this mm -hmm. precinct, to five. Mm -hmm. So what's so, that? So seven is just 0.15 percent low now. Um, and we'll pop over here and look at the focus minority. So now seven, it you know, it's not swinging it. Um, yeah, you know, Democrat, it did lower it slightly. But as, as we're taken from five, no, we're, we, we we're like minus 9,000 population points. We added to five. We, yeah. Yeah, we added yeah. to five. Comm Commissioner Orton? Well, I think we're on the right track if six can handle taking more off the bottom and then you can just do this circle again that you just did it, it's moving Take in the right direction more. okay if we can do it so along those lines i'm just going to go down here and just see how many people are in this precinct mm -hmm. that precinct is has 1436 um it won't bury um district six too low if you were to chose to move it to seven Okay, let's try it. So six is less than 1% under. 
Seven is 0.4% over. Um, just a quick gander here. This dropped a couple of tenths. So I suspect that if you continue to, you know, your line of train of thought on this, you're going to end up where you want to be. Okay. So then we go back up. Commissioner Orton. There, Never mind. I was I was hoping that we weren't messing up six, but it doesn't look like that's a problem. Yeah. It, yeah. Thank you, my friend, for checking. So seven. No, oh, here you are with seven. Yeah. Can you go up a little bit more? I want to kind of continue to where Commissioner Clark started to chip away. And Commissioner Orton, just to be clear, you were talking about that western edge of like where Mount Clemens is. Is that where you were suggesting shaving some folks off or slash adding to five? Let me be specific. Yeah, I think Doug can clarify, but I think it was up there in Chesterfield Township. Oh, okay. A little okay. bit north. Uh, so let's try to maybe that 676. Is that, a, that might be a little awkward. You're on mute, Doug. That brings the precinct as that. 2000. Or, that one or either the one below the one we had changed previously. One of the two. Either one. Okay. Well. I think there's more going to be more population down at the lower one. Okay. Sure. So let's well, not, take. You know what? I'm not sure because the other precinct's bigger. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Seagal. This precinct highlighted has 21, uh, basically 2,200. This had essentially 2,500. And it also went over pretty, uh, it's 2,300. So there's only 150 people difference between that and that. Okay. Um, I really am indifferent as to which one you take, to be completely okay. honest. Well, I'll take yeah. the, sm the smaller one just for the fact of aesthetic. You know, one of mm -hmm. our objectives is to make a lakeshore district here. Okay. So right, we don't want to go too far toward the lake. Okay. So either one is fine. All right. So it's a very small changes, you know, tenths of a percent. Senate districts are fairly large. You're going to have to move a larger number of people to uh, affect percentage change. Commissioner Orton. Kent, could we see the active matrix for two to see if maybe Brittany could move some of seven into two and grab a little more of six? Mm, it's already pretty high. Two is higher. Um, six, six is, you know, well, you can move, well, if you move two into five, it's probably not going to be what you want to see. These are all red precincts. Not that this is one election, not that one election tells the tale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened if we took more of the Mount Clemens area? No, don't touch that. Okay. The Mount mm -hmm. Clemens area, from what I could say, and, and one of the other commissioners okay. could point it out, but the blue numbers on top, that means there's more blue votes in there than red. Um, so mm, that, okay, that, yeah. Yeah. I don't know so how I completely just didn't even. Yeah. Okay. So that's not an idea. So you were saying, well, pulling some of two into five? The, the... Well, I, I brought it up, but just, you know, just putting an alcohol on it. These are all red, red precincts. So I would expect putting them in here would drive the percentage. It would make it more red than blue. Which mm -hmm. maybe may not be what you want to do. Right. I don't it's know. the wrong direction. That's what I was like. I don't I don't want to do that. Um, I don't okay. think five was close though. So maybe maybe it doesn't matter so much with five. All oh, right, we're working on seven, aren't we? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so uh, yes, because I I forgive me. I forgot that we're not working on five as a 
we're just working at the population level with five, not necessarily the partisan fairness level. Is that is that accurate? Okay. Does that make sense to you too, Commissioner Kellum? It does. I just didn't want to completely just make five like a dumping district, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, oh, okay, just disregard yeah. what's happening with five. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. In the interest of being concise, because yes, um, let's move. Let's move some of, let's assign that lower portion, that southern portion of two to five. Excuse me, could you be more specific? I'm sorry. Head, head north. Um, north. Head north where yep. we just were. My yep. apologies. At the border of two and five. Mm -hmm. Two and five. There you go. And the areas with the higher, the higher red numbers, let's take that. What, like up to that blue line, maybe. You might not even need to take all of that, though. Yeah. This is 1,700 people. That's 2,300. I'm just kind of bouncing through them. That's a, almost 5,000. 1,800. Okay. Um, and it looks like you want to move about, you know, 2,000 maximum. And the bigger, the, difference. the bigger one was what? That was the 559-303. What's that? That is 2,100 or 2,174, excuse me. That's okay. worth a shot. Yeah, yeah. Then, I mean, that's the one that I'll be reassigning, Ken. Okay. So now two is less than 1% over. Five is 2.17% under. And What's I believe we seven. Well, our, you did positively affect the plan deviation. We did lower the overall plan deviation. We're a little, a little under 9%, so we're heading in the right direction. And um, yeah, how are you feeling, Commissioner Kellum? We're, we're close to a break time around 4 o'clock. Mm. If you all want me to finish, we can. If we want to take a break, I'm indifferent to either, either choice, honestly. Go ahead, Commissioner Orton. I think you're going in the right direction. Just yep. keep on going yep. if you want. Okay. All right, so we need we need more of what now? What's happening? We need to put some more folks in five. And I think, and uh, to sort of you know, our I think our goal was uh, to work on the um, partisan fairness in District Seven. Seven, exactly. Yep. And then, um, so, so did we did we achieve that, or did we? I think we were it moving in the right close. direction. Yeah, I, we, it, it needs close. more blue. It means more blue. Yep. And so I think that may be where you want to stay focused. Or less yes. red. Or you less want. red. Yeah. Uh huh. And but I'm trying to keep in mind what Commissioner Clark about main, said about maintaining the Lakeshore District. So I don't want to touch, like, I could say get rid of that 591 up there in the 676, put that in District 5. But I don't know without others chiming in if that's necessarily the best choice for that. Commissioner Orton? That's why I'm being you're silent. Just, you're it's getting, not you're getting a thumbs up. You're getting a okay. thumbs up. Okay. But even 591 and maybe even the 676. Yep. That's right those it. are the two that I was thinking. Okay. So you okay. can add that, assign that to five, Ken, please. Commissioner Clark. Oh, I was just gonna suggest that as well. So I think we're on the right track. Okay. Glancing over back at it, you're, you're almost at 50-50. Keep on trucking. And, and seven is 1.13% low, and five is getting better. So did you say assign 676 to five? I did. I did. That's ugly now. Okay. Now five, seven is right at 2% low. And Good grief. yeah, it 
you know, it, it does, a, you know, that's just one election. So it may somewhere along the line balanced. It wasn't this, uh, this disparate. Com- Commissioner Orton. So the, um, the performance index that we're looking at, that's not just including that one election. That's the, the composite. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's more of. Okay. Yeah. So we just need to take more from six at the bottom, I think, just funnel it up a little more, see what happens, see if we can do it. Okay, you can, Ken, you can add that little curve, the 434, 356, 289, 459, like you can kind of go in that area. Okay, shall I do it one at a time? Just yes, so we have yes. That. I was just naming the numbers to. Get okay, you in the I'm right just going. Spot. This My looks apologies. like a highway here. I'm gonna stay. Just use that as a border. For sure. mm-hmm. Um, and and six is is you know it's starting to get a little bit lower. Now six is one point five percent low, and seven is one point three three. So we look at the focus minority matrix. And I mean, you know, on any given day, that's a 50-50 district, probably. Um, that would be my version of that's as close as I'm going to get. But I will, I'm interested to see what other folks have to say. Commissioner Orton, I know that you were um, <laughs> giving me. Yeah. You, you knew I had my mic on. Well, to, to help our numbers on our map, which is what mm-hmm. we're going for we have to actually get it to flip to 50.01 at least. So we got to keep going. Commissioner Eden. I don't know if this helps. It, it might, it might I'm, not. I'm like, take those two, Ken, that you have the trivia right there. Sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Eden. But uh, Commissioner Zatella emailed us last night with a, uh, with a few edits to this collaborative plan that she says that does what we're trying to accomplish. Now she's not here today, but maybe we could like do an overlay of that and, and see what those changes are and see if we want to apply them and to, if they do work. I don't know. I haven't looked at it, so I don't know if it's these changes in seven or, or five, but um, we did get that email this morning at about six thirty. I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to doing that as long as that is okay and there's not some weird clause that we don't know about and maybe like presenting another commissioner's work. Um, but I'm not opposed to um, exploring that suggestion. I'm just more interested in what will get us to the numbers that we're looking for, but also um, makes most sense visually in keeping all the other criterion that we have in mind but that's and, my and one we, voice opinion go ahead commissioner Callum. and you did i think you did ask kent to, to um to assign those two districts that the ones that i was taking advantage of seeing his cursor kind of i was like yeah take yeah. those and see what happens mm-hmm. so so move this this one that's 2100 people i think it was further north the, the, it was the, it was 873 mm-hmm. yeah 873 2700 mm-hmm. people and Commissioner Eden, maybe what I'll what I'll suggest is that maybe we can ask um, during when we have our break because we are going to try to take a break soon, and then we can talk about the downloads. Not during the break, but we'll talk about it and use the time to do the download. Okay. Now our uh, seventh district is two point three nine percent low. Five is a, a solid 046 percent high, and your minority raise now, it, you know. You, know, it, you just really it seems like we need to move chunks to do basically one percent of a Senate district is basically twenty two thousand six hundred and fifty of uh, two thousand six hundred and fifty total population, which would mean roughly every one of them or at least ha- over half of them majority of them would have to be Democrat compared to Republican. I hear you. So we've got 
majority Republican districts. We've got the 20, 2,000, 2,500 population in each of these districts, or excuse me, each of these precincts. But we're adding. So, Commissioner Orton, do you want to? I, I'm, yeah, I, feel I feel like you've got a good handle on this. Yeah. I feel like I'm shoveling too much out of six at the bottom, even though it's it's the numbers make sense as to why, but then I'm depleting that district. Um, but you called Commissioner, on Commissioner Orton. Yeah, Commissioner Orton. Well, how many, what are the numbers of 16? The overview. It's low too. Conundrum. <laughs> Literally. Is it a good time for a break? Yeah. So, and and I, I want to acknowledge that Commissioner E was to, trying to figure out a way to mm -hmm. sort of maybe help yeah. us yeah. get an overlay or get some idea about what other what another commissioner has worked on. Again, it's not a suggestion to just take that, but maybe we can um, during the break. Um, Kent, if you could uh, download it from the website and then just bring it up as a as an overlay so that we have some other suggestions. Okay. So, and are there objections to that, commissioners? Are there any objections to that? Okay. Hearing no objections, um, I'm also going to um, acknowledge that it is time for a break. And uh, with uh, we will recess. It is 413. We will take a 15-minute or 17-minute recess. And we will return at 4.30.